Will all members of the council as well as the public please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Senior Pastor Jerry L. Maynard, Southside Community Church, the, the guest of Council Member Taneka Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, God, we first come to say thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, God, for this country, our great country, and the great opportunities that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for this great city, the city that we all love and cherish. We thank you, Lord, for the men and women of this body who have chosen to serve and who Nashville has chosen to lead. We ask you, God, that you give them wisdom and compassion. God, allow them to work in one accord with one thing in mind, and that is to please you. For a city that's been given so much, it is required to give even more. In all these things we pray, we ask you to bless this meeting. In our Father's name, amen. Before we do the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, um, I thought it would be fitting for us to take a moment of silence uh, for Senator Doug Henry, who passed away this, this uh, week, um, for Luther Kendall, the brother of our colleague, Mr. Councilman Ed Kendall, and of course for Vice Mayor Jay West, all of whom passed away this, this last week. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those council members present during the uh, course of the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting of February 21st, 2017? Without objection, those minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to elections and confirmations. Is there a report from the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee? Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the uh, council. Uh, obviously, there is a report from the Rules Committee. Um, we had a couple of uh, reappointments and appointments. Uh, the first was the Emergency Communications District Board was for the reappointment of Ms. Susan Matson for a term expiring February 14, 2021. Happy to note that Ms. Matson has served on this board since 1995. So the questions were, why do you want to continue? But she really likes serving. We approve that one. Seven, four, zero against. Move for approval. You've heard the motion for uh, reappointment of Ms. Susan C. Matson to the Emergency Communications District Board. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, NECAT, National Education Community and Arts Television Board. Uh, this was for the appointment of Ms. Uh, Mattia Powell for a term expiring February 5th, 2020. Uh, the uh, second reappointment of Ms. Reed for a term expiring the same date. Uh, Ms. Reed was, um, uh, has been deferred one meeting, but we voted on Ms. Powell. Um, that was approved 7-4-0 against, and I would move for approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Mattia Powell and Ms. Akila. I'm sorry? Just, just one. I'm sorry. Just, just the appointment of Ms. Mattia Powell. I'm sorry. Uh, You've heard the motion for confirmation of Ms. Mattia Powell to the Nashville Education Community and Arts Television Board, NECAT. It's been properly seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Work Release Commission. Uh, these are nominees of Sheriff Darren Hall. Uh, one reappointment, Reverend Frank Gordon. Uh, the second reappointment of Father Ed Steiner. Mr. Steiner was not, Father Steiner was not able to come, so that was deferred one meeting. Back to the reappointment of Reverend Frank Gordon. He was able to come tonight. We talked to him. Uh, he has been serving on the Work Release Commission since 1997, and we certainly appreciate his service. We approve that uh, reappointment, 740 against, and I would move for approval. Thank you, Councilman. I'm paying a little bit more attention now. Uh, you have heard the motion for confirmation of Reverend Frank Gordon to the Work Release Commission. It has been properly seconded. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we would like to recognize those citizens who were confirmed tonight. Uh, if you will please stand as I call your name and remain standing until uh, everyone has been introduced. To the Emergency Communications District Board, Ms. Susan C. Matson. To the Nashville Education Community and Arts Television Board, Ms. Mattia Powell. And to the Work Release Commission, Reverend Frank Gordon. On behalf of the entire Metro Council, we do thank you for your willingness to serve uh, as volunteers and offer your expertise to the city. Thank you very much. <laughs> Council Lady Johnson, I, Amina Johnson, I believe you have a presentation. Said you had to be. Uh, there you go. That makes it better. Thank you, Vice Mayor and members of the council. I do appreciate uh, this special privilege. Uh, tonight, I would like to recognize 10th anniversary of Japanese speech contest. So, before I say anything, it would be proper if I read the resolution. Uh, resolution number RS 2017 569. A resolution recognizing the 10th anniversary of the Tennessee Area Japanese Speech Contest. Whereas on April 1st, 2017, prospective part participating university, Belmont University, East Tennessee State University, Maryville College, Middle Tennessee State University, Murray State University, University of Memphis, University of Tennessee at Knoxville, University of Tennessee at Martin, University of South Suwannee, University of Tennessee Chattanooga, and Vanderbilt University will gather at Vanderbilt University for the annual Japanese speech contest, and whereas the contest was founded by Keiko Nakajima, senior lecturer at Vanderbilt University in collaboration with the Consul General of Japan in Nashville, and whereas each year, Approximately 40 students presented their speeches and competed in three levels, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, and have been supported by Japanese affiliated companies and organized organizations located in Nashville area and beyond. Beginning in 2017, the coordination and execution of the contest will be independently managed by the teachers from Tennessee area and whereas the contest gives opportunity to the student of Japanese who study at any college or universities in Tennessee area to present their language learning outcome held annually at the end of the academic year is platformed for contestants to display the culmination of their Japanese language study up until the point, enables further improvement in their Contestants, Japanese language ability through a process that involves skills such as writing and memorization of the speech. And whereas the speech contest motivate learners of Japanese to devote themselves with even greater zeal of their studies. In addition, contests promote greater intercultural understanding between the US and Japan and encourages interaction exchanges between participating universities and where participants in the contest have deepened understanding of Japanese language and culture by listening to speeches given by their peers and felt immeasurable, immeasurable sense of accomplishment that give them a confidence to challenge difficult tasks in the future. And grand prize winners were given opportunity to visit Japan and experience real life in Japan. And whereas it is fitting and proper that Metropolitan Council recognize Keiko Nakajima, Vanderbilt University, Priya Anath, Middle Tennessee University, Kyoko Hammond, University of Tennessee Martin, Yoko Hatakeyama, Mori State University, Mike Fettel, Mitsui and Company USA Inc., 
Consulate General of Japan, Nashville, the Japanese Foundation, Nisa North America, United Airlines, Middle Tennessee Japan Society, JUST, Japan American Society of Tennessee, Brother International, Mr. Japanese, Bridgestone Americas Holding Inc., Toshiba America Information Systems Inc., and Tennessee Foreign Language Institute for all their contributions and support. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of the Nashville and Davidson County. And I would like to now uh, invite uh, Ms. Keiko Nakajima to say something in Japanese. Domo arigatou gozaimashita. No, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all uh, council members for recognizing Tennessee Area Japanese Speech Contest. This contest is very meaningful in that it promotes mutual understanding of Japanese people and uh, American people. It also is a great opportunity for the students of Japanese who attend Tennessee area university and colleges to present their achievement. I hope this contest to continue many, many years to come. And I ask for your continuous support. Thank you very much. Thank you. That brings us to resolutions on public hearing. RS 2017 571, Councilman O'Connell exempts Henrietta Red, located at 1200 4th Avenue North, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of RS 2017 571, please raise your hands. <laughs> those opposed? Seeing none, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Pardew. Public safety passed uh, 6 0. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 572. Uh, Councilman Kendall and Councilman O'Connell exempt Slim and Husky's Pizza Berea, Berea, I'm guessing, located at 911 Buchanan Street from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I know uh, as we just uh, experienced a moment of silence for Councilman Kendall's brother, I'm happy to carry a few resolutions and bills on his behalf tonight as our districts are adjacent. Uh, in this case, I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of RS 2017-572, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none, do those in favor wish to speak? Okay, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Pardew. Pass 7 zero, public safety. Thank you. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval on Councilman Kendall's behalf. The motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on public hearing and third reading. BL 2017-580, Councilman O'Connell, Gilmore and Hart, amends the Metro Code authorizing the creation of a downtown central business improvement district and appointing a corporation to act as, the, as an advisory board to the district with the powers and authority to carry out the purposes and intent of the district. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-580 please raise your hands? Thank you. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? But, but not for very long, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, my name is Emily Evans, 113 Pembroke, Nashville, Tennessee, 37205. I'm here on behalf of my friends Steve Smith and Al Ross, who um, own a number of properties downtown, uh, which you know of, uh, Rippy's, Honky Tonk Central, uh, The Diner, uh, Harry O's Steakhouse, and of course, the world famous Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. 
Um, we are here in support of the CBID, um, but want to, for the record for you to know that prior to signing our petitions, we had a number of conversations with Tom Turner regarding uh, concerns about uh, safety and sanitation downtown and the importance of those two things for keeping the downtown entertainment district a family venue. Unlike a lot of entertainment districts in this country, Nashville's downtown area is a place where people take their children. And we want to make sure that they will always take their children and always feel that it is safe and clean in order to do that. So prior to signing our petitions, and, and Tom had to hound us for a couple that uh, got lost, um, he was very diligent. Um, but prior to signing our, our petitions, we did have those conversations, had a brief conversation with the council member. And, uh, we'd like to encourage the council member and the council to, um, to hold the CBIT accountable for those things. Um, you do have budget um, review authority, please use it. Um, I have no doubt, having known Tom Turner for many years, that he will embrace and encourage that kind of transparency and accountability. And if it isn't, um, if it isn't, if it isn't good, we're not gonna have a good downtown district and, uh, and people won't come and that's not good for anybody. So with that, um, I thank you for your service and your support. And, Glad to be leaving early. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Council Lady. Seeing no one else in support or in opposition, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee report, please. Mm, I think we... Oh, I, we got it approved. Never mind. I don't need that one. You're right. Uh, then I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to just celebrate the efforts of the Nashville Downtown Partnership staff, um, as well as the numerous property owner volunteers they enlisted, uh, as well as State Senator uh, Thelma Harper and State Representative Bill Beck, who uh, with me serve as ex officio members of that board. Um, the, this was a process that unfolded over many months, and I believe that the interest of those uh, who got us to the well beyond the minimum threshold of petitions necessary to pursue this under state law, I think should be indicative of the support for downtown, including those those aspects of safe and clean uh, that were just referenced by Council Lady Evans. So with, with that, I'd like to move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on public hearing and second reading. VL 2016-488, Councilman Sledge, changes Point one four acres from IWD to MULA zoning for property located at 1267 Second Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer this indefinitely, please. Motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016 489. Councilman Sledge. Uh, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0. Changes 0 0.34 acres from IWD to MULA zoning for properties located at 1277 and 1285 Second Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Same thing. I'd like to defer indefinitely, please. It's motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute Bill BL 2016-493, Council Lady Henderson, O'Connell, and others. Amends the Metro Code pertaining to sidewalks. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move the second substitute, please. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill is substituted. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With that, I would like to defer the public hearing, please, to the first meeting in April. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in April. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016-513, Council Lady Wiener. Elrod and Allen amends the Metro Code pertaining to the Department of Water and Sewerage Services. Council Lady Wiener. I'm sorry, Councilman Elrod. I'd like to defer that to the uh, May 2nd public hearing, please. The motion to defer to the, to the May public hearing is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL, substitute BL 2017-555, Council Lady Murphy. Changes 31.89 acres from R10 to RS10, zoning for various properties located along Clearview Drive, Crescent Road, Estes Road, Westmont Avenue, and Woodmont Circle, southwest of Wilson Boulevard and Woodlawn Drive. It's approved with a substitute by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Council Lady Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. 
Would all those in favor of uh, BL 2017-555 please raise your hands. Those opposed? I've got some movement in the back. Council lady, is there anybody in opposition? Please raise your hand if you're opposed. Seeing none, I, I can't see because of Council Lady Gilmore, but oh. it, okay. Do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Murphy. Great, thank you so much. This is a this is a bill that we've worked on a lot with the with the neighborhood and taken back to the Planning Commission to make sure that um, it was accurately reflecting uh, what the status of a lot of the properties were. And we will have a, a final amendment on third and final reading to make sure this is all taken care of. So, with that, I move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-557. Councilman Sledge. This has been referred to the Planning Commission. Applies 13.76 acres of a neighborhood conservation overlay district for various properties along Hillview Heights, Cisco Street, and Inverness Avenue, northeast of Ox Lane, and du Deweese Avenue. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to defer indefinitely, please. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 575. Councilman Bedney. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Amends 2.9 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for property located at 1031 Barnes Road and Barnes Road unnumbered west of Blackpool Drive to permit the addition of 2.9 acres. Councilman, uh, and I think I can also take BL 2017-576, Councilman Bedney, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Uh, changes 2.9 acres from AR2A to RS10 zoning for property located at 1031 Barnes Road. Councilman, Councilman Bedney. Yes, can we please open the public hearing? With all of those in favor of BL 2017-575 and 576, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bedney. Are there any committee reports? No. This is uh, one of those uh, uh, rezonings that, you know, by the time I finished the community meeting, my district people were asking, why did you even have this meeting? I mean, they were all in support. It was, it was one of those nice things that happened. So having said that, uh, I ask for your support on voting yes on this uh, re second reading. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-577, Council Lady Haywood, approved by the Planning Commission 10 and 0, changes 14.12 acres from R20 to MHP zoning for property located at 1343 Dickerson Pike. That is the first time I've ever read MHP zoning. I'm just going to say that. Wow. Council Lady Haywood. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'd like to open the uh, public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2000. 17577, please raise your hands. That was quick. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Haywood. Uh, yes, will there be any committee reports? Not till the third reading on this. Program. Okay. Um, then I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017, you. you're welcome. BL 2017 578, Councilman Swope, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes, I'm sorry, approves a historic landmark overlay district to 3.11 acres of property located at 10604 Concord Road. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017 578, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Swope. Thank you. Move approval, please. The motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-579. Councilman Kendall, Councilman O'Connell. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Changes 0.68 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 2805, 2807, 2809, and 28. 11 Delaware Avenue to permit up to 16 residential units. Councilman O'Connell. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Before Councilman Kendall left this evening, he did actually uh, request that this bill be deferred one meeting. I'm assuming that would also carry with it the public hearing, so I'd like to move to defer one meeting. I think we'd need to defer it to the April public hearing, which would technically be let's, two meetings. That'd be fine. Perfect. Uh, let's do that. The motion to defer to the April public hearing is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-594, Councilman Sledge, uh, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission tenants. So changes 0.7 acres from IWD to SP zoning for properties located at 921, 923, and 925 Bass Street to permit a self-service storage facility. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-594 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilman Sledge. I move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-595. Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 0.42 acres from RS 7.5 to R8A zoning for property located at 2336 Old Matthews Road. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We'd like to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-595 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. I would like to move for approval. This is the motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-596, Council Lady Van Rees. <coughs> Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Changes 3.21 acres from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 3043 and 3045 Hillside Road to permit up to 29 residential units. Council Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. Well, can we open the public hearing, please? With all those in favor of BL 2017-596, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. I'm bringing much needed residential uh, development to the area. I request approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 597, Councilman Bedney, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 3.56 acres from AR2A to RS20 zoning for properties located at 1245 Barnes Road. Councilman Bedney. You almost said something else. I did. Please open the public hearing. Uh, would all those in favor of BL 2017-597 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bedney. I'm requesting your support on this uh, proposal. There's that a motion to approve? Yes, I'm trying to use euphemisms. Okay, well, let's stick with the I motion to approve. Okay. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-597. Councilman Kendall, Councilman O'Connell. Approved by the Planning Commission 901. Changes 25.86 acres from MUGA to MUIA zoning for property located at 2300 Patterson Street. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is a bill that I'm carrying on behalf of Councilman Kendall. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017 598, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. It's a motion to approve. It is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-599, Councilman O'Connell. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 901. Changes 0.59 acres from R6 to SB zoning for properties located at 1719, 1721, and 1723 6th Avenue North to permit up to 11 residential units. Councilman O'Connell. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I think that was my mistake. I didn't notice I was next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-599 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none oppo opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? 
Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Council Lady Murphy would like to be recorded as abstaining. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> BL 2017-600, Council Lady Roberts. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Amends 1.13 acres of the Osceola Place Specific Plan District for properties located at 107, 109, and 111C Osceola Avenue to add parcels 1, 2, and 900 to permit up to nine residential units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-600 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Roberts. Seeing all committee reports are in, I'd like to move for approval, please. Second. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-601. Council Lady Roberts. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Amends 1.12 acres of the Osceola Park Specific Plan District for properties located at 108 and 110 Osceola Avenue to add parcels 132, 133, and 134 to permit 13 residential units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, With please. All those in favor of BL 2017-601, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Roberts. Seeing all the committee reports are in, I'd like to move for approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-602, Councilman Scott Davis. Approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 0.87 acres from IG to MUA, MUIA zoning for property located at 100 Spring Street. Councilman Davis. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-602, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. I'd like to move for approval with a very brief explanation. Floor is yours. I know that we've had some trying times of recently that we've all had to pray to our Heavenly Father a lot recently in the city. But this is something that we can celebrate here. This development is a, an African-American owned development <clears throat> on Cowan Street, on the riverfront, right next to Top Golf. <clears throat> Lots of times, what makes Nashville the greatest city on earth is because we allow everyone to participate in this city. And this council allows everyone who is qualified, no matter who they are and what they look like, to participate in the growth and development of our city. And I know recently we've all been excited about the 135 acres or more on the riverfront that will be developed with the help of the, this council, the mayor's office, and MDHA. But more importantly, this crown piece on the corner here is owned by an African-American family, and they will be developing this um, the same way all those other parcels will be developing it. Large 15 stories, residential, with some fun commercial space, and maybe a restaurant, maybe a coffee shop. But this city, we are all allowed to participate. And we need to remember that even in our darkest times. And this may seem kind of redundant, but we sometimes have to remind ourselves that everyone no matter who they are or what they look like, can participate. And it's very important that we remember this council did this. It just happens to be in my district. But the mayor's office and this council has allowed, allowed this to happen. And I just want to thank you and to let everybody know is that minorities and women are building also and that we're letting them as a city more than any other city our size. So I just want to thank you all for this great blessing. A motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-603, Councilman Coleman, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, changes 14.35 acres from AR2A, IWD, and OR20 to IR zoning for property located at 12575 Old Hickory Boulevard. Councilman Coleman. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please proceed with the public hearing. With all those in favor of BL 2017-603, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? I'll declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Coleman. Move to approve. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-604, Council Lady Van Rees. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Changes 0.58 acres from RS10 to SP zoning for property located at 710 Due West Avenue to permit 10 residential units. Council Lady Van Rees. Open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-604 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Uh, to continue the Madison Renaissance, I ask for your approval. <laughs> Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-606, Councilman Freeman, referred to the Planning Commission. Changes 37.41 acres from R8, R10, and R15 to RS10, zoning for various properties located along Foothill Drive, Hollydale Drive, Deervale Drive, Shady Oak Drive, and Giant Oak Drive at the northeast corner of I Interstate 24, and Old Glen Rose Avenue. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. We're going to need to defer this to the first meeting in April to uh, track with the Planning uh, Commission. All right. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in April. Is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-607, O'Connell and Sledge, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 87.16 acres from R6 to R6A zoning for property located on 12th Avenue South, 13th Avenue South, 13th Avenue Circle, 14th Avenue South, 15th Avenue South, Edge Hill Avenue, Grand Avenue, Hawkins Street, Horton Avenue, Marshall Court, Music Circle East, Sigler Street, South Street, South Side Circle, Tremont Street, and Villa Place. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-607 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to, wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Or is yours. This is, uh, I, I guess I'd like to say thanks to a couple people on this one. This one is one that, it, Edge Hill is a neighborhood that is split across two council districts, primarily mine and Councilman Sledge's, and uh, this was one of the first uh, major tasks that we put on Brandon Burnett's plate in the council office after he joined our staff. It was one of those things that was just a wonderful moment of community participation. We had dozens of neighbors uh, participate, offer input. Uh, we had a big uh, community meeting at the Midtown Hills Precinct that was well noticed, well attended. Uh, Councilman Sledge and Brandon uh, were both in attendance at that. And this is really part of a, a toolkit where the community is really guiding a long conversation in response to a number of things, including a, a detailed neighborhood design plan in the past, uh, changes that were a result of Nashville Next, uh, and now looking to future that maintains diversity, character, walkability, and a number of other values important to Edge Hill. So very proud to be sponsoring this one. I would love to uh, encourage my colleagues to support this, and I would like to move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to our last bill on public hearing and second reading, Bill 2017-611, Councilman Bidney. It's been referred to the Planning Commission. Amends the Metro Code to require the consent of adjacent property owners, homeowner associations, condominium associations, or other such community associations prior to the issuance of a short-term rental pr uh, property permit. Councilman Bedney. Yeah, uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm going to request the deferral of the public hearing and the legislation. Uh, I think we need to, um, how many meetings do we need to defer? To the May meeting. That one. There's a motion. Can I, you, can I make a brief? Uh, well, I believe there is a, is there a proposed amendment, Councilman? Yes. You want to move the amendment? I would like to move the amendment and make a brief explanation. Okay, there's a motion to amend. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Your motion carries. You're now on your bill as amended. Okay, and I'm uh, 
The amendment will, rem I just wanted to explain that uh, for the people who are watching on TV, this will remove the uh, requirement of the neighbor signing off on the, on the on the request, on the permit, and also it will tweak the uh, HOA rule to meet uh, state guidelines and rules. We, uh, we want to really meet uh, the constitution of the state of Tennessee. That's uh, advisable, so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, however, uh, the reason I'm trying to move the referral is so people have an opportunity to read the new uh, amendment and, and just don't come all the way here and, and, and be exposed to having to comment about something that, that has changed. So that's why I'm requesting the deferral. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in May. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That brings us to the consent agenda. The following items are on Those, the following items are on the consent agenda. RS 2017-571 through 584. 571 through 584. 586 and 589. Those are on the consent agenda. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to pull 586 off of consent, please. 586. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want a point of order. I didn't see a 571. Is there a 571? Okay. I just want to make sure. Excuse me? 571. There is a 571. That's wrong. Okay. All right, okay. then. Thank you. My list is incorrect. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. A point of order, 589 was not unanimous in committee. When it rains, it pours. Councilman Shulman. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I was just uh, rising on 589, but Councilman Rosenberg took care of it. You guys are on top of it. If you'll bear with me, then I will read the consent agenda. RS 2017-573, Sledge, Cooper, and others, approves a grant from the Tennessee Historical Commission to the Metro Historical Commission in conjunction with the Metro Parks and Recreation Department and the Friends of Fort Negley to hire a consultant to complete a cultural, landsta cultural landscape plan for Fort Negley. RS 2017-574, Councilman Cooper, approves a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Board of Health to enhance access to a comprehensive continuum of high-quality community-based care for low-income individuals and families with HIV disease. RS 2017-575, Councilman Cooper, approves a grant from the State Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide comprehensive care coordination services to eligible children with special health care needs. RS 2017-576, Cooper, Elrod, and Allen, authorizes the Director of Public Property to acquire real property for the use as part of a stormwater improvement project. RS 2017-577, Councilman Pardue, Cooper, and others, approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation to the Depart Department of Public Works and the City of Millersville for the replacement of the old Shiloh Road Bridge. RS 2017-578, Pardue, Cooper, and others, approves an agreement between Metro Government and the City of Millersville for the replacement of the old Shiloh Road Bridge. RS 2017-579, <coughs> Councilman Swope, Henderson, and others, approves an agreement between the State Department of Transportation and the Metro Department of Public Works for a traffic signal at I-65 northbound exit ramp at the old at Old Hickory Boulevard. RS 2017-580, uh, Sledge, Elrod, and Allen abandons ex existing sewer mains and easements and accepts new sewer main, uh, mains, manholes, and any associated easements for four properties located along Franklin Pike. RS 2017-581 author authorizes GC Restaurant Operations LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at two 2003 Belcourt Avenue. RS 2017-582 Councilman Cooper 
authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Wilma F. Braden against Metro Government in the amount of $15,000. RS 2017-583, Councilman Cooper, authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the claim of Robert Williamson as next of kin of Joseph Garcia against Metro Government in the amount of $125,000. RS 2017-584, Councilman Cooper, authorizes the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Geneva Woods against Metro Government in the amount of $11,500. That is the consent agenda. Committee reports, Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance Committee met and um, recommended for the Council's approval 573, 574, 575, 576, 577, 578, 579, 582, 583, and 584. All were recommended to the Council by a vote of 12 to 0. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coleman, Codes Fair and Farmers Market. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Codes Committee meet. Met and approved four four zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman R Rosenberg, Education. Do you have that? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, uh, resolution twenty seventeen five eighty nine. Education voted six in favor, none opposed, and one abstention. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lady Gilmore, Health, Hospitals, and Social Services. I'm sorry, Councilman Pulley. I knew that. Councilman Pulley. Health Hospitals and Social Services Committee met and uh, approved Resolution 2017-574 and Resolution 2017-575 as written, four in favor and four against, Thank and you. zero against, excuse me. Thank you. Council Lady Henderson, Parks, Library, Recreation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Parks, Library, and Recreation voted on Resolution 573 and recommended approval seven in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Council Lady Allen, Planning, Zoning, Historical. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, Zoning, Historical approved resolutions 2017, 576, 577, 578, 579, 580 and 581, 12 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman Pardue, Public Safety. Public Safety Review 459, failed three, four, four against. 588, passed three, four, two against, and one no vote. Thank you, Councilman. Oh, do I have one more? 483. I, I believe my paperwork here is incorrect, and I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll be coming back to you on these. I don't think any of your bills are actually on the consent agenda anymore. My, my mistake here. Um, Councilman Elrod, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for resolutions 576 through 581, Public Works recommend approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I don't think uh, rules has any reports on the consent, but I would move to approve all resolutions on the consent agenda. There's a motion to approve the consent agenda. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> that brings us back to RS 2016-459. Mendez, Gilmore, and others request the Metro Police Department to inform the Metropolitan Council when they agree or disagree, I'm sorry, whether they agree or disagree with the research findings and a recent report from Gideon's Army regarding M MNPD traffic stop statistics in Nashville and to further provide any other statistics or information necessary to refute, confirm, or add context to this report. Councilman Mendez. Committee report, please. Councilman Pardew. Public Safety reviewed it, and it failed 3-4-4 four, four again. Thanks, sir. Councilman Mendez. I'd like to move approval with an explanation. Floor's yours. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This uh, resolution was filed after a private group published a traffic stop data report last October, and in that report, it indicated that there were differences, significant differences, in how different racial groups in Nashville experienced traffic stops. This ordinance does two things only. One, it asks whether MNPD agrees or disagrees with the data in the report, and secondly, it invites MNPD to provide any other additional data or context they feel is necessary to put the report in context for the public. Um, this seems like a simple request. It's not any sort of attack on the police department. It's a request about whether the information is true or not um, and to provide any additional information for context. The goal of the legislation has been to address issues of race, the criminalization of certain communities, and policing in Nashville. This is a hard topic. Um, our committee, the Public Safety Committee, voted four to three against. That indicates the difficulty of this topic. Um, it's a hard topic because on the one hand, um, we believe, I think everybody in the council believes, that our police officers, our men and women in uniform protecting us, are both well-meaning and well-trained and don't carry any racial animosity toward anybody. On the other hand, we've got the reality that there is a difference in how people of different races experience traffic stops in Nashville, even after you correct for what parts of town they might be driving in. There is an undercurrent of tension in our community. We've seen that in the last month. And there is no way to um, deal with this by hiding it or keeping it um, a secret. The way to deal with the hard topic is to have a conversation about it. The point of legislation, the point of this body, is to pass laws that are a statement of our values as a city. I would recommend to everybody that this resolution is a statement that this council encourages a full, frank discussion of these very difficult issues um, in the open for the public to see and participate in. I'd like to thank the Public Safety Committee that has dealt with this for the past four months. I'd like to thank everybody that put together the hour-long public hearing we had in the beginning of January. And I'd also like to thank the police department and the community for participating in such a robust conversation. It is time to pass this resolution. Um, it's, it's good for Nashville to shine a light on these difficult topics. Thank you. Councilman Shoreman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I think um, my fellow councilman said it very, very well. Um, I was just going to add, um, you know, the report um, that we're um, that we have simply raised some questions. Uh, I think the resolution is um, is doing its best to, um, or and and it's just being fair to um, to get those questions answered. Um, I like what the councilman said. Always good to communicate. That's how we do things. We simply are, are looking for answers, and I think this resolution is calling for that. And um, so what I'll do is I'll say that I uh, appreciate what they're trying to do, and I'll be voting for it. Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, say I, I know that there there is an issue, and I, I don't want to waste any time, and I want to, you know, I applaud uh, Council at Large and all the things that you're doing. but. We do know that there is an issue right now. Uh, I think we need to focus more on how can we curb that or how can we fix that issue instead of paper pushing and doing those things. Because there is an issue that is here in our city. We need to try to find out answers to those questions. Uh, me being an African-American, I do know even me being an elected official, I get pulled over myself. But that's neither here nor there on that side. I think we need to focus more on and allow the police department to fill in the blanks and do what they can do to actually fix some of these issues or try to find a better way to protect us but not discriminate at the same time. Uh, this is an issue. It's not only happening here in Nashville. It's, it's going all around the country. And uh, we're just a, a piece of that puzzle. 
but I would like to, you know, put into that play, not just to be able to say that they looked at their records. I think they, they have enough information to be able to tell it because I speak with um, my North Freezing commander often. There is a record, and there are some things that he was able to explain to me about that of saying, listen, the majority of the people that are in this area are African Americans, or now we have a, a larger group of Hispanics that are moving over. So that can be a part of the reason why those numbers are higher, but we have to fix the issue. There is an issue that is going on to where people are being pulled over and discriminated against. We need to find those answers and close, and we need to do it as soon as possible. Thank you. Councilman Pardew. I just rise to say the same thing as I said last time. There's not nothing being asked for that hadn't been offered. There's, I've got a message from a chief today it was so damn long I didn't want to read it, but I did. <laughs> and I've listened to everything here. There's just not nothing they're asking for that you can't get. And why legis have to legislate the chief of police to send us information? Just don't make sense to me, and uh, I'm done. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I wanted to rise just a, a moment while we're discussing this as well and uh, thank uh, Councilmember Sam Coleman who uh, did a lot of work putting together a community meeting in, uh, in District 6 last Thursday. I know it was a little bit of short notice, but uh, I know Councilmember Coleman was working uh, to make sure that some of the community concerns that were raised uh, were, were vetted and addressed with Mr. Jamison and others and really appreciate the many council members who came out to listen to that community forum. Uh, as the district council member who represents District 6, which does include the Casey Homes, you know, the statistics don't lie in the sense that uh, there are areas uh, of District 6 and some of our other neighborhoods that do have a high incidence of crime. And we do have neighbors who live in those areas who are heavily uh, victims of, of crime or have to uh, in, endure a lot of uh, things in their community that, that aren't safe for them or for their children. And I think that all of us here on this council want to make sure that our government is providing the resources that are needed to protect all of our citizens. I really uh, want to ask uh, in particular for our at-large council members who bring so much skill and, and diversity of background to this council, um, uh, this resolution may or may not actually help to help us to reach better solutions going forward for what those stops need to look like. I really just want to uh, call upon my at-large council members in particular, please join with myself and some of the other district council members who have these areas in our districts that are uh, pockets of crime where our, our citizens are being victimized by crime. Please work with us to continue having community conversations where neighbors feel comfortable sitting down with the police so that we can figure out what will work, that we can keep our citizens safe uh, and also not have a disparate number of, uh, of inconveniences or things like that for, for folks. So I just want to ask, you know, I think resolutions are fine. I, I think that paperwork has limited um, limited capacity to heal some of the some of the real concerns that we have in our community and I just uh, again want want our at-large council members to please work with the district council members that have these areas to keep people talking to each other and working on solutions thank you Councilor Gilmore uh, thank you vice mayor I, I think um, that was that's that's a good segue that uh, council member weathers brought forth so I wanted to thank uh, council member uh, Pardue uh, for his leadership in that uh, committee public and safety because it's been going on for a long time, but he's been very patient. And even though we disagree, it's been done respectfully. And I want to remind everyone, with this particular resolution, we have had a uh, joint committee meeting. We've had some dialogue outside of that. Uh, the vice mayor has helped me with getting with uh, Melanie Fowler Green, and we're gonna have discussions out in the community about race and um, policing as well. And the Minority Caucus has reached out to Chief Anderson, and we sent an official letter, letter about two weeks ago asking him to come and speak with us as well, as well about this issue. So I just wanted to highlight, I think we are operating holistically, and I'm gonna continue to support this. I'm a co-sponsor of this uh, resolution. Um, I think a resolution, once again, we kind of got into the particulars earlier, but what a, what a resolution does for the 
the uh, listening audience, all it does is it's an ask, it's a request, and it just says we, we stand in support of. It's not any a bill, it does not demand anything, but it just simply request that. And I think we do need to answer some of these questions. And what I love about Nashville is most of the time, when I'm in Nashville and I see visitors, they say, I just love Nashville. And I've literally seen tears come out of their eyes. I'm thinking, oh my God, because Nashville is a great place. It's very friendly. And I think we have not had a lot of the issues that other cities have. And I think it's because of our ability to talk and dialogue. So we must continue to speak to the to truth and some of those things that are uncomfortable for us, continue to work on it so that Nashville can still continue to be a great place because there are some major cities that people just do not want to go to. They don't want to be a part of that. And so I think we do have our issues, but I do think we're working on them. And I think that's that's what makes Nashville a great place. And that's why I can just say, I just love Nashville, like all the visitors. So I want to encourage all my colleagues to support this resolution. And I think um, all my uh, council members that went before me made very um, salient comments. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilman Scott Davis. I rise in support of the resolution, but more importantly, you know, this is a very important resolution, but I want to stress to my colleagues, let's not just focus on the issues dealing with, with communities and policing. Let's do similar resolutions and do some legislation focused on poverty and addressing the inequality in some of these neighborhoods too. Because where you see some of these issues, you'll see issues with poverty, you'll see issues with, with lack of education, and you'll also see that these facilities Certain schools or certain facilities may get more money and get more resources allocated than maybe somewhere else on another side of town. And so what we have to do is we don't, we need to address more than just this, even though I'm in full support and I'm glad we're addressing this. But, you know, areas of North Nashville, South Nashville, where, you know, their community center may not be as nice or they may need more sidewalks in other areas, not trying to play around in anybody's district, but we need to address the um, poverty aspect and address the job aspect because a lot of these communities, even though we have this record low unemployment, but in which communities? You know, in communities and the elephant in the room is where large populations of African Americans, Hispanics, and other minorities, you know, the, you know, the recession is still going on. And so we're the it city, and I love it that we're it city, but we have neighborhoods where we have to address this just as vigorously as we're addressing the issues with dealing with, you know, the unfortunate incidents that have happened here in our country as a whole. So I just want to remind everybody that I'll be doing resolutions and legislation addressing poverty. And also, I encourage you to do the same thing for your areas. Thank you. Councilor Hart. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just uh, rise to say I also support this resolution. And I actually thought that the resolution uh, was initiated because when the public meeting was held, the chief of police did not attend to have the open communication that we would like to have. And I also accept the um, invitation from Councilman Withers to work along with him and any other district council person who would um, accept my assistance as we deal through these issues. Madam Clerk, will you open the machine? Thanks for your patience. We have a little bit of a technical issue with one of our voting screens. We're good. Thank you. Madam Clerk, if you will 
close the machine and tally the vote. I have 31 for, 7 against, no abstentions. Motion carries. B RS 2017-566, Councilman Scott Davis, Council Lady Mina Johnson, expresses the Metro Council's support for the Medical Cannabis Access Act currently pending before the Tennessee General Assembly. <laughs> Councilman Scott Davis. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the Rules Committee deferred one meeting, 740 against. Council Councilman Davis. Move for one meeting deferred with a brief explanation, sir. Floor is yours. We've added another sponsor, um, and in the spirit of bipartisanship, we want to make sure we add the right house sponsors. So we're going to agree to defer for one meeting in order to make sure that our brothers and sisters on both sides of the aisle get credit. Thank you. We're all about credit. Councilman Elrod. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I, I was gonna, we didn't want, I don't want to save my comments until we talk on, until we discuss the bill, but I have concerns about us picking legislation that does not directly impact Metro government. Um, resolutions regarding, uh, you know, transit funding. Um, you know, there are several bills at the legislature dealing with stormwater, transit, short-term rentals that directly impact the governance of uh, Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County. And while I believe personally this is very important, I don't think that we need to start uh, passing resolutions for uh, for many of the bills that we want to have a uh, stance on then we, we when we do pass resolutions we want those to have the biggest impact possible uh, while this is I believe a per very uh, personally a very important issue I don't think that it has a direct impact on metropolitan government and how we run our city and our and Davidson County therefore I don't think this is something that we should be considering thank you mr. vice mayor motion to defer one meeting is properly seconded all in favor Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-585. Councilman Shulman. Approves the election of notaries public for Davidson County. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the Rules Committee approved as amended, 740 against. And for the purposes of getting that amendment in front of us, I would move the resolution. Motion. All right. Probably seconded. So, uh, 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 thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Now I would move the amendment. There's a motion to amend, which I believe adds a name or names it to adds the list. One, it adds one name. Motion to amend is properly seconded. And then and I would move. All, uh, in, all in favor? Sorry. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your resolution Then as I would amended. move the resolution as amended with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is the Nun Republics, and uh, what I'd like, if everybody would like to, I'd like to read all 642 names that are on this list. You can step outside. We'll come back to you. <laughs> Renew my motion. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-586, Council Lady Roberts, Wiener, and others. Request the Par Department of Codes Administration to properly fill existing vacancies and add additional personnel in order to effectively enforce property standards. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Vice Mayor Briley. Committee reported, <coughs> the committee uh, studied the issue, voted for, for, none against. Councilman Councilor Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation, please. Second. The floor is yours. So I think that all of us have the responsibility to answer to our constituents. And the number one thing I hear consistently is that codes has had some shortcomings. And I think it's my job to figure out how to help that the most. And so I was told by Talia 30 minutes ago that a lot of the positions that we were told were going to be filled by the consultants in December of 16 have been filled, all but two of them. But I still feel like we are at a huge disadvantage compared to other cities. When I um, decided this week I was going to be proactive, I rode with an urban forester and we have one urban forester in all of Davidson County. So I decided I would call Austin, who is a comparable city, and they said they had 22 urban foresters and that they were at a huge, they were grossly lacking. So I called the Indianapolis ur urban forester and they said they had 20 and they also felt like they were lacking. So I started last Thursday, the 23rd, and I went to codes every day at 7.30 a.m. and took a picture of the wait times. So if you look on the, on the board, <clears throat> on Thursday, 
It was eight hours at 7.30 a.m. It was eight hours and 41 minutes. On Friday, it was eight hours and 50 minutes. Wednesday, um, then the following Monday was five hours and 56 minutes. So maybe you should go on a Monday. Um, on Tuesday, it was six hours and 28 minutes. Wednesday, seven hours and seven minutes. Thursday, eight hours and 13 minutes. Friday, eight hours and two minutes. And then for the grand finale today was at 8.08 a.m. There were, it was 12 hours and four minutes. We have a problem, a, a huge problem. And I'm here to support codes. I'm not here to condemn them. I'm not here to criticize. I'm saying that we need more support than we've even given them in the 2016 budget. I'm gonna talk about this a lot in the capital improvements budget because I think this is very, very important. Um, what I'm gonna propose is that we have 16 new property standards uh, inspectors in addition to what we have, that we offer seven more zoning inspectors. And I think it's important to do seven urban foresters. In my neighborhood in the nations, we have literally, all the trees are gone. And the, the, the rule is they have to put a two caliper tree back and nobody's enforced it. And so I think this is a this is a crisis. We are in an emergency state right now. So I hope that they all would um, support me in this. Thank you. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 587, Councilman Bednay, request the Metro Department of Codes Administration to seek diverse candidates that are inclusive and representative of Nashville's local demographics and languages when filling existing vacancies and adding additional personnel to enforce property standards. Councilman Bedney. Yeah, I, uh, I was wondering if I can suspend the rules because committee reports. Councilman Coleman. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor Bradley. Committee voted uh, three, four, none against to defer by rule. And I was wondering if I could uh, as humbly to spend the rules because I was in another meeting, I couldn't make this meeting. You're asking to suspend the rules related to the committee report? Yes, sir. Councilman Shulman. Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, <laughs> so there's two rules now that would have to be suspended. One is that uh, there was no committee report. And then the second one was that um, I think you're, um, have to go to the Rules Committee or just probably should have mentioned it to the Rules Committee if you're going to suspend the rules on this type of thing. Um, I guess I need to figure out what the, um, if there's an emergency to get this thing um, passed. Uh, in that case, and so I don't uh, draw the anger of uh, Councilman Schulman, I'm going to withdraw my request and, uh, and just come next time. Deferred by rule. Thank you. RS 2017-588. Council Lady Karen Johnson, Virtue and Haywood, requests immediate purchase of at least 168 Metro Police Department, <coughs> excuse me, body cameras for the officers and supervisors responding to proactive calls for service, and that funding be provided in Mayor Megan Berry's proposed fiscal year 2018 budget with a timetable for deployment beginning June 30th, 2017 and with implementation policies that provide for, for public access, independent oversight, transparency, and accountability. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval, and I also request a machine vote uh, with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. Let's get a committee report a first. A committee I'm report, sorry. please. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. After a lengthy discussion yesterday, Budget and Finance recommended uh, 588, 10-4, for against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Pardew. After exhausted communication and public safety, we passed it 3-4, 2 against, 1 just couldn't make a self vote. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to consider that an abstention then, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Is that correct? Madam Clerk, thank you. Councilor Lady Johnson. Thank you. Colleagues, the charter gives the council only two ways to speak, and that is through ordinances and resolutions. Just like we supported our colleague, esteemed officer and Councilman Doug Pardue's resolution, requesting motorcycles for police officers from the 4% fund, we also had a resolution we approved by our now mayor, who was at the time a councilwoman, 
uh, for the Davidson County Election Commission to purchase or lease optical scanning voting machines and um, to um, do additional voting machines if the funding was available. The community asked for a commitment to body cameras. And this resolution gives our commitment that at minimum, 168 cameras will be purchased. Should the upcoming budget allow funding for all officers to have body cameras, that will be all for the better. And I do want to acknowledge the FOP President James Smallwood. Back here in the back, we had a great conversation. Um, and speaking with other officers, I also want to um, acknowledge NAACP President Ludie Wallace and Pastor Howard Jones and other activists that are here today. I reviewed the substitute legislation that was offered by the administration, and I am pleased that it appears that we are in agreement that body cameras are essential crime-fighting equipment as we move forward with ensuring the safety of citizens and officers alike. I'm also pleased that our FOP endorses across the board body cameras for all officers. While that is still being reviewed for feasibility at this time, like any journey of a thousand miles, it begins with a single step. Today, I believe that step is the purchase of 168 body cameras to be in use by June 30th because critical needs require specific deadlines, not vague promises. I must remind each of you that a young man in our community is dead, and these cameras absolutely could have led to a different result. I know that our police department can handle such a phased-in implementation of body cameras because that has been exactly our approach with dash cameras because that has been exactly, because over the last several years, they have done an excellent job in allocating and expand, uh, expanding the use of that technology. The officer that was involved in a recent shooting and the previous shooting that occurred on Dickinson Road both worked in proactive units such as FLEX and CSU. Based on my knowledge of the FLEX teams, the officers assigned to these proactive units have a greater likelihood to encounter persons with guns and have to make split-second decisions that could result in deadly force, as in the case of Mr. Clemens. To my knowledge, the commanders used the proactive units to address problem areas in each precinct, along with part one crimes such as residential burglaries and aggravated assaults, just to name a few. Patrol, on the other hand, spends the vast majority of its time answering calls for service that come in from our citizens. It is my belief that if we have officers that are sent out to look for crime and are having a high number of contacts with our citizens, each that we should equip them with body cameras to protect them and the citizens alike and to add accountability to their proactive enforcement. Flex officers are more prone to get involved with incidents dealing with guns because they are a proactive unit. The reality is body cameras are coming. This is only requesting and offering a start. That is what has been said by our mayor's office and the chief and the minority caucus of the council says start with a pilot that is reasonable to test out and to calm the concerns that people have shared in their plea to the council the Tuesday before last. The difference we have today is how they will be phased in. The FOP says all or nothing. The community says we want some now. We can't drag our feet. We are acting on this today with legislation that puts each council member on record to support what is needed. Working in good faith together instead of coming up with excuses and concerns that can be ironed out with the draft policy set to be released at the end of March is the right thing to do. It's sad that it took a fatal incident where someone has died in an outcry that could have led to the upheaval in our city to catapult everyone into being serious about the body cams. Does it take a riot to move to action? 
Jay Stanley, a senior policy analyst for the ACLU, said cameras have the potential to be a win-win. <laughs> you can finish your sentence. Go ahead. <laughs> that it has the potential to be a win-win, helping protect the public, and at the same time helping to protect police against false accusations of abuse. I ask for your support of this resolution. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I think it's uh, important uh, to speak on this and, and say why I'm going to vote no. Because I think we're sending a message to the community that this actually is accomplishing something, and it's not. It's a non-binding, memorializing resolution that's asking for a number that's been pulled out that says we think this might be the right number. It might be the place to start. It might not be. The reason I'm not going to support this tonight, and I called uh, Reverend Fuzz today, and unfortunately his mother's passed away and he's in town, but I spoke with him today with regards to the reason on why I would be voting no tonight, because this is window dressing. This is not us taking an, an actual action and saying that we want, we're serious about wanting to fix it. We have the budget process that we're about to enter into. Uh, I'm certain the mayor's staff will be bringing us a, a recommendation. I'm certain the, the chief of police will be bringing us a recommendation. Uh, the other reason I'm not voting for this is because by June 30th, 2017, we don't already have it in the capital budget to make this move. And so if we're going to be serious about it, let's be serious. But let's do it in a manner that actually accomplishes something as opposed to just window dressing. And I'm not taking it lightly. I'm saying it very seriously that we need to be intentional about how we address this. And if, in fact, we're listening to our constituents, let's make sure that we're addressing it and we're being serious with all of those members. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, one of the great things about being on this council and being in Nashville is you can share a different perspective and still come together and work and reach some common ground. And I do share a different perspective than that which you've heard from uh, the sponsor. I uh, appreciate very much the work that they do in the community and I, I agree with Many of my colleagues, counsel, my colleagues on the council's comments, Councilman Withers spoke very eloquently when he was talking about the Gideon's Army report and uh, the concerns he has in his district, and I share those concerns. I have an African-American, well, I have a biracial son who appears African-American, and we all know if you're biracial, a society doesn't see the white side of that. So I hear his perspective constantly whether I want to or not. So I get the fact that there is a distrust in the community for the police and a distrust for the process. We've had a long debate about the body cameras, and for the record, I support body cameras. Uh, having been a former law enforcement officer, more video is better. Uh, the more I can show on video, the less I have to testify to otherwise. And I believe the police department supports this, and I do believe that we have been moving in a direction, in a positive direction. In fact, the police department's ready to appear before the mayor's office in a few days uh, with a budget that not only includes money for body cameras, but money for dash cams as well. So uh, I support all this, and I also get the distrust that comes with the African American community and the police department. What's troubling to me about this resolution is the timing of it. The timing of it comes in response to information that we heard from a group of people who, quite frankly, in my opinion, do not represent the broader community. We heard a lot of inflammatory things before us, not the least of which was the accusation of murder on the part of this police officer without a factual basis to support that. We also heard other calls for things like uh, disillusion of the agreement between MDHA and the Metro Nashville Police Department and Casey Holmes, and the people who reside at Casey do not support that. So they do not support, they don't speak for the Casey residents. So that's particularly troubling to me, the timing of all this, because when you look at these incidents nationally, one of the disturbing things to me is the leap to the conclusion that the police have done wrong here. And I think that is very, very troubling and a troubling trend that we need to watch out for. We've got a joint investigation going on right now between the Metro Nashville Police Department, 
the TBI, and the FBI is all monitoring this investigation. So the facts in this matter will flush out. Unfortunately, when you leap to a conclusion in advance, it's very difficult to get you off of that conclusion if the, spa if the facts speak to something different. Now, I feel for every victim in this case. I feel for the family of Jacques Clements, his sister, his mother, his family, his friends. They're all victims in this. But one of the things that nobody really talks about is a police officer. I feel for him, too. His life is miserable for him right now. I mean, I mean, he's going through a very, very difficult time as a resolution to this uh, is occurring. His family is troubled as well. So I want to call for us to take a pause and list, wait, await the results of this investigation before we move further. And this resolution looks to me like I would be complicit in joining the group of people who were before us in reaching those conclusions. So for that reason, I will not support it. Thank you. Councilman Pardew. I didn't want to take up any more time, Vice Mayor, but a point was made when my name was called about research. You can't trust all research. I never filed a resolution to buy 25 motorcycles. It was blocked by uh, Budget finance. I had nothing to do with the motorcycle. The mayor's office did that. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I appreciate this opportunity to speak on this again. And obviously, this is uh, this incident, the ongoing discussion, and the particular incident that has elevated this discussion is uh, weighing heavily on the hearts and minds of of all of my East Nashville constituents in District 6, and particularly in the in the Casey Homes. Um, I definitely appreciate the analysis that's been provided uh, by Councilmember Glover and um, Councilmember Pulley. I, I think there's a lot to be said about making sure that we're getting things right when we do implement new technology and new processes. Um, and and uh, I, I think there's a lot of value to be said for that. I definitely heard uh, both at the last Metro Council meeting and at last Thursday's community meeting that people want us to act. Um, Mr. Jameson had the unfortunate uh, position of being in a position of replying to, con to some of the concerns that were raised that it will take time and it's complicated. And that is accurate uh, information that he provided, of course. Uh, I, as the district council member, want to be as responsive to my Casey residents uh, or residents in that, in that vicinity as I can. And, and it's not always easy for me to get that feedback because there aren't uh, as uh, robust of neighborhood associations and things like that in KC as there are in a lot of other areas in the district. So when I hear, when I do have an opportunity to hear from KC residents, CWA, some of those other folks in that area, I want to take that feedback that I receive very seriously. And in particular, I want to take the feedback from the, the Clemens family as seriously as I can. And so even though my analytical uh, self tends to want to wait until the process is, is right. I'm going to rise today in support of Council Member Karen Johnson's resolution and say that um, the family and the residents in, the, in that vicinity do want us to take an action as soon as possible. I know we will eventually work it all out. I am going to support the resolution today to, to go ahead and, and signal the Council's intention to start as soon as possibly we can, even if that, that may mean that at some point we may need to tweak things going forward. But I do want to support my, my residents in, in the area that's been affected by this, and particularly uh, Mr. Clemens's family. Thank you. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when I spoke last night, I promised to try to be a little more eloquent tonight, but don't hold me to it. Um, I continue to have mixed feelings on this resolution. Uh, it has nothing to do with cost. If it's good policy, it's good policy, and we need to figure it out. Uh, my dilemma is this. On the one hand, people who are fearful of driving the car or walking down the street are looking for accountability. Um, I can't speak to the feeling that comes with that experience, but I can empathize with it and folks are looking for re relief, and I, of course, support that. But on the other hand, I'm gonna play the role of Chicken Little and say that my concern with body cameras in general is this. M my fear is that it's gonna create new problems without solving the underlying issues. 
a body camera records everything that happens in front of an officer, not necessarily what happens in a physical confrontation, mind you, because it can be obstructed and shaky, but the things that happen in the environment around him or her. If enabled, it records the faces of members of the public who are protesting something. If enabled, it records the faces of members who, of the public who are spending time at a particular location. If enabled, it records the faces of members of the public who are at a gathering. In the rub, the issue with that is that software is becoming more and more pervasive that can match the face in a video frame to the individual's identity. And that identity can be stored or it can be used to immediately initiate an action. The counter to that concern goes storage is too expensive, manpower is too expensive, local government wouldn't do that kind of thing. And yeah, that's all true today. But storage is getting exponentially cheaper. Facial recognition is getting increasingly automated. And we can be compelled to provide that footage to the state and federal governments. So by bringing in body cameras, we're taking a major step toward an Orwellian future. One where simply being at a march or being at a protest can put you into a database to be shared with state and federal authorities. One where someone who's been deemed a threat, legitimately or not, could be instantly identified and detained. Maybe that sounds far-fetched, maybe it's conspiratorial, but the police state doesn't happen overnight, it happens in drips. It grows the way your grass grows, and you don't see it growing, it's just one day, it's pretty tall, and it becomes very pervasive, and my fear is that we're moving toward that. So whether the loss of liberty is worth the security is the question, not necessarily surrounding this resolution, but the discussion around the increased surveillance that comes from body cameras in general. And I hope that policymakers and concerned communities will keep that in mind as the conversation continues. Thank you. Council Lady Mina Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I am in deep, deep dilemma. I'm so turmoil because we heard from community at the last meeting, cry for help, do something, help us. And I've got that message in my heart. So we would like to do something, take action. And of course, I support accountability and transparency. On the other hand, this resolution, this is memorializing. It does not solve anything. And we understand, we hear. So because it's memorialization, uh, do we just support it, just take up support it? I just can't do that because it will give false hope because when I vote for it, I want to see the result, the constituent they are asking for because this resolution will not that, you know, uh, problem solving so quickly. We hear all the cries, so, as of right now, I don't know what to vote, but what I want to do is, I we heard the community. We would like to uh, work towards achieving accountability and transparency. So we would like uh, mayor's office and team and the citizens advisory committee to meet up and bring up good policy because body camera without policy will harm the community more than bringing the good result. So we need to hurry up and bring the good policy so we can implement the body camera in right way, benefit the community, benefit and protect the uh, men and women in the uniform. So for that, I'm really tall. I really don't know which way I'm leaning towards, but since it's gonna be machine board, I just want the community to know we hear you. Uh, we are working towards a solution. Thank you. Councilor Hart. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I have uh, concluded that we have fundamental differences in perspectives. That means the, 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 the majority people and the minority people have fundamental differences in understanding. And what we saw two weeks ago was a roll of thunder, hear my cry. We have the responsibility to protect our people 
first. And we have had broken promises one after the other. All human beings have a need for safety and respect. And for some of us, our history tells us that we must express ourselves in a different manner to obtain what others get by virtue of their positions that they hold, like the chief of police. In some cases, when you have a situation like what happened with Jacques Clemens, you have an eruption of violence. You have protests running rampant. Yet in Nashville, the black community protested with nonviolence strategies. They showed up at the council meeting and yes, disrupted the meeting, but that disruption was a cry out for help. The community begging to be heard much like they did about 50 years ago when Diane Nash and John Lewis and others disrupted the mayor's day and confronted him with soul searching questions and comments, both cut to the heart of him as a man. And that's what we saw last week. Questions and comments that should have cut to the heart of every man and woman that was here in the room. But there historically has been negotiations between the two, the meetings of the minds coming together and discussing what should or should not be. Different than any other place, we here in Nashville have a unique place. As men and women elected by the people for the people, we have a responsibility to answer to the people. So today we have an opportunity to make history just as Mayor West did, an answer to the people. The body cameras are not a panacea to the problem, but it does solidify the efforts that we've already made to ask the government and the police department to be more transparent. It is an exhibition of action that is tangible proof that you heard the community, and more importantly, that the community heard you when you said that you were listening. We listened, we paid attention, and now we need to make positive change to reduce and in time eliminate the racial disparity that exists within our community. Let's send the message that we understand and want to connect with those who had the courage to be seen and heard through a nonviolent strategy. We are being proactive and will avoid any kind of violence or physical protest with positive and open communication with our community. Because we are different, we are yet the same. Standing united, we are Nashville. Vote yes for the body cameras and make a difference. Councilman Murphy. I'm not going to repeat too much of, of what my fellow colleagues have said tonight, um, but but they're definitely different perspectives, and it's got me kind of thinking on, on both sides of this. And unfortunately, I was out of town yesterday and not able to attend and ask some of the questions of budget and finance that I would like to ask if I can. I just was wondering if this is something that could be done. I know that. Um, the sponsor had had referenced and compared this to a four percent request. If this, if if finance could explain the difference or whether this is something that could be done now through a four percent um, a four percent fund request. Also, if this was passed in the budget, if if it would still meet the timelines that are kind of being asked for, and if there is any idea on the overall cost and upkeep of, I know that in the in the resolution before us, it says 168 um, body cameras, but we obviously have more police officers than that, and if we have any ideas on costs there. Okay, uh, there are a lot of questions in there, so I'll summarize what I think Sorry. I heard. <laughs> uh, in, in terms of uh, whether or not you can fund this from, the, from 4%, uh, I think it depends. It depends on, um, 
on exactly what we're funding. And uh, we're waiting on the recommendations from the Citizens Advisory Group. So I can't, at this point, I don't know what the cost will be in terms of um, to, uh, to implement this. So, uh, and the 4% fund um, can, of course, only fund equipment purchases. Uh, in, a, uh, in implementing the use of body cameras, there would be some operational costs that would also have to be incurred in addition to the equipment. So um, I would say in terms of, of budget availability, we just don't, today, we don't know what those costs uh, would be. Okay, but we could look at that as one potential source of revenue, yes. In terms of the uh, budget process, the uh, chief has submitted some uh, preliminary numbers to the finance department. Those are being vetted right now, and the mayor will get a um, specific request from the police chief next week uh, with some estimates of operating and capital needs to implement uh, body cameras uh, for the entire city, not just a small pilot, but he is uh, working with his staff to present what an overall proposal may cost for the city. Okay. Thank you. That, I mean, that kind of, that, that, that answers that it. It's probably the best that, that y'all can tonight, at least. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of unknowns that kind of really tear me on both sides on where we want to go with this. On one hand, you know, we want to we want to make sure that our citizens and our employees are protected and that we are able to see what really is going on, but we also have to think of the rights of the victims and the privacy of, of, of those that are around them. So um, I'm really torn on this, and, and I appreciate the commentary that I'm hearing from my colleagues. Thank you. Councilman Scott Davis. Even though some of us have different opinions, Steve Glover is a friend of mine. I know this is tearing him apart, but it's just, and I don't want, depending on his vote, I don't want anybody speaking ill will of him. He is a good friend, he is of mine, and he's a good friend to, to all our communities. And I want that to be clear, so is Russ Pulley, and I respect anybody's differences of opinion. But I want to ask you something. I'm hearing resolution. It's not binding. Resolutions don't mean anything. Now, I may not have a degree in, in US history, but the Declaration of Independence, did that start off as law? We have 11, 12 lawyers here on our council, maybe three more in the audience. Um, Mr. Mendez, was that is that part of our Constitution? Um, President Lincoln did that to point out that something was wrong. Something was wrong when someone who looks like me, you know, or someone who may be from a different part of a country, maybe Asia, maybe other countries, that when they came over here during a dark time in our history, but they were forced to do things, and I'm trying to sugarcoat it, we know what I'm talking about. You know, slavery, African Americans, 500 years or more, Asian Americans, Indians, and other minority groups, women, let's just put it out there. But that was not law, that was kind of like a resolution, it was not binding, but it sent a cry out there into the, into the whole nation. What we have to do here is, it may not be as great as a document like that, but we have to send a message. I'm voting for this, but I'm not just voting for it just because you know it's the right thing to do, but more importantly right now is, we have to let this community know, and all our communities know, how we feel, and that we want the cameras. I know the police want the cameras. I know the mayor want them. I know we all want that. But we have to let the folks know what we're needing here. And to kind of say that this is not going to help, I beg to differ. That document, you know, changed the perspective of a whole nation, of the world. And, you know, I'm not the world, I'm not the U.S. history scholar that some of the members are here are. But looking at that perspective, you know what I mean? 
We have to do this. I feel obligated, not just as African American, not just as someone that's been falsely arrested, falsely pulled over, falsely abused by the police, but at the same time, I've had many Metro officers help me. It was a Metro officer that came to my rescue, mm -hmm. and it was the chief, when a Parks police officer was abusive towards me when I was coming to the mayor's inauguration. Um, and then that's and that's the truth, you know. Sorry, it was her. It was it was her yearly update for the, her first Metro budget. That a parks officer accosted me. It was it was handled, and it was the chief that took the reins. And that needs to be said because majority of our officers are great officers. But we need to support this. We have to support this. You know, our community is crying out to us to do something, and we need to do this. You know, and you know, I'm not gonna keep laboring the fact and I appreciate all your opinions and you know, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna love Steve Glover after this because he's just being honest and he and he's doing what Steve does. He tells it how it is, how he feels, and he will still do everything in the world to help anybody in this city. You know, and but at the same time I'm urging all of you to vote for this. Councilman, Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I had promised myself not to speak tonight because I, in the last two committee meetings, have spoken enough. I'm worn out. I'm sure as so is everyone else. But after some statements were made this evening, I just feel like I had to stand and make a statement for all the police officers. Identifying that this is a, a non-binding resolution, then we say, what's the purpose? And, they, and, and it's been said, the authors of the legislation have said it's to, it's to make a point, show what we think, or show how we feel, and, and be able to express our, our sympathy and concern for uh, what has been taking place. Completely understand. However, a non-binding resolution that is par paralleling legislation or uh, uh, actually pur purchase of these body cameras by the administration, it now shows me, it, ta it takes the air out of the balloon, the air out of the tire. Why, again, are we doing this if, we're, if this is being done by the administration? So. With that being said, the statement was that there were 168 requests for 168 cameras. 168, that just happens to be the number of flex units officers in that the officer involved in this, this incident worked with, worked in. In the committee, in the committee meeting, the uh, safety committee, it was asked, it, it was stated, stipulated and stated that we all wanted cameras for all the police officers. Everyone wanted that. Everyone was in agreement. There was one request to the sponsor to ask if they would remove the number 168 and, and make it for all. Absolutely not. What statement is being made there? Now, I want to speak, it was, uh, speaking for the FOP. The FOP was in that safety meeting and they uh, were asked to speak, and they spoke, and they wanted to, uh, they voiced their concern about just for 168 officers. What about the rest of the uniform officers? Well, I'm gonna speak for them. It was stated that the, uh, the proactive officer is the officer that, may, uh, that would need them the most. Well, let me tell you something. Every police officer in a uniform that get, picks up the, te, uh, the microphone and says, 10-4, I'm heading in your direction to help you, that is a proactive position. That man, but he's going in a situation he has no control at that point or no knowledge of what he's going after or going to to assist. He needs a camera. Again, I go back to why 168. All these officers want cameras for their protection as long as the protection as well as the protection of the innocent people that 
may be the, that he may come across. However, I'm gonna tell you, speaking as a retired homicide detective, not a council member, that has stood over dead bodies that have been, uh, including stood over wounded police officers and investigated many of them, I can assure you, sometimes it, do, it doesn't matter whose who's camera or if they're proactive or not. At the end of the day, your job, your responsibility is to investigate and bring the culprit to justice. If it's a police officer, so be it. If it's, the, if it's an innocent citizen, so be it. Whatever that is, it is their responsibility and cameras are gonna help. Cameras will definitely help, but they're needed for everybody. So again, I go back, why 168? Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to stand as a member of the Minority Caucus uh, and, uh, and someone that will support this this bill or this this resolution. Uh, but I did wanted to bring up a few things. One of the things, just really quickly, is a couple of the constituents referring to our last meeting. And I will not go on on and on with this, but everything about that last meeting was not good. It did not happen in the appropriate way. The language was not correct, and I will not stand and falsify or even intend for that to even look in that manner. Uh, that meeting was shown on, part of that meeting was shown on MSNBC, and I thought that it looked at us as fools, as we could not handle the guidelines from which we were under. Uh, again, the council, everything about that was not great. But then we go into the area of, of the shooting that happened. Mr. Clemens is a person that I knew, and I grew up with myself. I know a lot of you, I don't go around talking about everything that happened to me with, as a kid, but he grew up in my neighborhood. He was a couple of years younger than my, my sister, but also, he was also a married man. He was not currently with his wife, but they, they go to my church. He has a young son that I see every Sunday. There are several things that are going on, but that is not the picture of the, of the bulletproof, bullet, not the bulletproof, I'm sorry, the, the, the cameras that are going on. We are dealing with bigger and bigger issue. Yeah, this is an incident that happened. There were several incidents that happened. There were incidents that happened when I was a kid that I saw a guy with, with, a, with a, a knife in his hand and for undercover agents to shoot him down in my front yard. There are several things that are wrong. Yes, we do need to fix it. Do we need to do it now? You know what? That's up, up in the air. How do we need to do it? I have no idea. But we need to put things in process and do it the right way so it will no, be no if ands, or buts about anything. I am tired myself of finding ourselves in the position to putting things out and we can't do anything about it. I will support this resolution because we are going forward. Actually, we're going into the budget season, but I do not feel 100% certain that this is going to answer life's questions. God is the only person that will be able to do that. I know we only play a, my, a, a small part in this picture, but we need to answer those things appropriately that we can fix parts that are broken. I am so sick and tired of all of this cover up and cover down. I've seen it for years and years and years of going on. Stop playing politics. Stop stepping out and speaking because I'm, I need to look this way or go this way. That time is out. We need to do what's right for the constituents in this community, and that time is now. Thank you. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Vice Mayor Brawley. Um, arise tonight for more or less a uh, point of clarity, and Mr. Jameson, uh, I want to call upon you to help us out. Councilman Pulley was very eloquent in his statements. However, I think there was a conflicting statement there, and this is important because they're going to come a greater day than tonight. And that day is going to come when the results of the investigation are released, those dates. Tonight is a prelude to where we're going in the end with this subject. 
And Councilman Pulley said that we had a joint investigation. I'd like for you to speak to that to clear it up because as we go on, some of the issues are trust. And I know on behalf of the Metropolitan Police, on behalf of those who are looking for justice, they want to know how this investigation or the number of investigation that are out there, and I would like for you to bafficate them to make sure that the public can understand um, when the results come back, they are valid. So I only say I want you to clear it up because I want everybody to know just where we stand as it relates to the types of investigation that are going on. Uh, sorry, sir. Metro Nashville Police Department has uh, an automatic investigation that kicks in whenever there's a use of force that results in bodily injury or death. And they began their internal investigation. That investigation is ongoing. Um, shortly after that, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation announced that they were conducting um, a separate investigation. They're not technically joint, they're, they're just proceeding at the same time. Uh, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the fact that it's ongoing, places some limitations on the records that are available. Uh, the police report is, is a result of the TBI investigation not available as a public record until that investigation is completed. To my knowledge, there's not been an announced timeline for either completion, um, and that's, that's all I know. Thank you, sir, and that's all we needed from you. Um, and i go to my seat by simply saying that I just wanted to clear up that point because I wouldn't want anybody to take away from the councilman eloquent statements that we had a joint investigation. It's very important that we invest and believe that there will be independence on this review. So that's the only reason I stand tonight, to make sure when we get down the road, there will be no confusion as to the validation of what we will hear. Thank you much. Council Lady Gilmore. Mm, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I just wanted to stand briefly just to speak to, I've heard several council members share that the this uh, memorializing resolution does not do anything. And I really wanna share that it does. It is so important that we understand that uh, the, the community came up here, they shared uh, that they wanted cameras. This is a non-binding resolution, we're, we're asking for cameras. And also I just wanted to share, I think sometimes, I think growing up and just being a black person, I just have to speak as being a black person right now, most of the time I don't put on that hat. There's a double consciousness that exists though. Sometimes I'm able to see things from a perspective, from my perspective as being black, and I can see them out of another lens. And I think sometimes council members may not see that. And I, and I say that if you're saying that it doesn't make a difference. I think this stands as an apology. It says that we're understanding. And to a group of people that came up last week, not all of them, but some of them are disenfranchised black people. And I think a, a gentleman said it in so many words. He says, if I do the right thing, I end up dead, possibly. And if I do the wrong thing, I end up dead. So to me, that was very telling. And you can go back and you can play the tape. So I think we have to be understanding of that. And I just want to share this last story. I, I remember um, a council member and I, who's on this council, we were hanging out two weeks ago. And I said, would you please uh, support the les legislation? And she sh shared with me, she's Caucasian. She said, you know, I, I just don't see it, council lady. I just don't see what you're talking about. I want to help you, but I just don't see it. And so then after that event happened, she came back and she said, you know what, I do see it and I'm sorry. And to me, that was very life changing. Anytime we can't see something and when people are suffering and our inability to see that, it's a problem and you can't make people see it. So those of you who don't agree, there's no hostility no, or no hard feelings that you just can't see it. But when you have the opportunity and you're in, in, in the majority and you may not uh, come up against those things. And she shared that. She said, you know, I just never had those problems with um, police in my community. None of my uh, neighbors had those problems. But now I understand it is a reality and I will help you. So we are sharing with you as a minority caucus that we need help and that this is an issue and that people of color that are in the urban areas, they feel disenfranchised. And for them, this is their way of saying, this makes it better. Is it an all-solving solution? No, but they're, at, they're telling you. So for us to tell them something different, like this does not make a difference, is otherwise. It's kind of uh, condescending in a way. It's like, no, no, we're gonna help where we want to, when they've already shared how we can help them. And we're not saying that we have all the answers. We're saying that it's non-binding, which acknowledges that we know what our um, 
what, 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 what our capabilities are. So uh, to, to keep for, for, for people to rise and say that it, it doesn't make a difference, I just really disagree. Because when, when I feel wronged and someone comes and they say, you know what, I'm sorry that that happened that way. That's, that's a beginning of healing. But to never acknowledge that, we can't start on the conversation and we just cannot move forward. And I think we have to acknowledge that, we have to speak to that. And I think that I try to go on record every time whether someone's, you know, if it's a, it's a gay issue, I, I get it. I try to support that because I understand how it feels when you feel like you've been wronged and other people don't see it. Whether you're a woman, whether you're poor, I get it. So I want us to stop saying, even if you don't want to support the resolution, stop saying that it does not make a difference. Because the community has shared that it makes a difference. I feel, as a person of color, it makes a difference because we're just acknowledging that something has happened. We're not saying that anybody is wrong or a bad person, but something has happened that we don't want to happen. We don't know why. We'll continue to talk about it. We'll continue to discuss it. But it does make a difference. And for those people that can see that it does make a difference, I appreciate you. And for those who can't, Hopefully, you'll, you'll move on over to that direction. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Councilor Archer. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I share some of the same sentiments that Council Lady Gilmore just expressed. But I would ask for everyone to support this resolution. This resolution is basically the voice of the most vulnerable that came before this body. Some of you get it. Some of you would never get it. Some of you are conflicted. This is a simple vote. If you're on the side of the people and you heard their cry out for help, you'll support this resolution. If not, we know where you stand. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilor Roberts. <laughs> so I was the said Caucasian that <laughs> spoke <laughs> with Lady Gilmore, and Council Lady Gilmore um, a few weeks ago. So I'll be really brief. I'm, I'm a vice chair on the safety committee, and I was the main person saying, let's don't polarize with the police. Let's, we don't have a problem. Nashville is a city that has no prejudice, and I don't mean no prejudice, little. And, and I, I really felt strongly about that, and then I heard them speak, and I was brought to tears almost, and it, it changed the way I looked at it because I don't think anybody should live in fear. Nobody in our city should be afraid that when they're pulled over, they might be hurt or killed or shot or any, anything. I just don't believe that we want, are a society that wants to have people that live in our community in fear. And so I am standing, I am going to vote for this, but don't get hung up on the 168. I was also the said person that asked about the 168, and that's not, it's not the number. We're not here tonight to make a decision on body cameras. We're here to send a really clear message that we care and that we heard it. We heard them. This isn't going to change anything. The, the, at the end of the day, the body cameras are probably going to be something that are in the budget for the, with the police anyway. But, so we're not voting on that today. But we are sending a really clear message one way or another. And I think it's really important to let people know that we hear them when they're fearful. Council Lady Haywood. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm just um, very grateful that Council Lady Gilmore has spoken because what she articulated pretty much echoes what's in my heart, much like many others here tonight. Uh, it's obvious where I stand because I'm one of the co-sponsors, and I think um, Council Lady Johnson and Council Lady Vircher have done such an excellent job of disseminating all of the facts. Well, I would just like to say as the first black African-American, rather, however you want to describe it, at Stratford High School, I know what it feels like to cry out. I know what it feels like to cry out. I can't tell you what it feels like to be uh, a Caucasian male. I don't know what that feels like, but having um, a son, an African-American son, I know what that looks like. I know what that feels like in the community. And I'm not going to belabor the point, but to me, I came into this with the other council members. I guess you could count it naivety because I thought this was a no-brainer. I really did. I thought this was unequivocally a no-brainer. Uh, and like someone said, 
you know, it, it's, it's just sending a message. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And I think that it looks mighty sad on our part to treat this in a way that it doesn't mean anything because it does. And I think if we don't vote for this bill, it's sending a very clear message of how we feel. It sends a message um, in regards to our sensitivity or the lack thereof. So there's a lot I could say, but I think uh, Council Lady Gilmore so again, so eloquently articulated my feelings. So I just beseech thee to vote yes for this particular bill because it will make a difference. Thank you. Council Lady Blaylock. Thank you. I just want to fast forward to the first meeting in July when we still don't have body cameras and how many people are really going to be here and be very, very angry and very confused. Um, I wish we were sitting here tonight talking about actually pulling down 4% money and buying cameras for all of the police officers instead of sending false hope to the people that are truly hurting the worst. I've got you, Councilman Pardue, you're last. Uh, you, the floor is yours if you'd like it. Madam Clerk, if you'd open the machine. That's Lee Murphy. Madam Clerk, if you'd close the machine tally vote. I have 34, five against, two abstentions. Motion carries. RS 2017-589. Councilman Shulman. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, RS 2017 589, Councilman Shulman requests the Metro Council, working in conjunction with the Office of the Mayor, the Director of the Metro Nashville Public Schools, and the Metro Board of Education, create a new program for the young in Nashville and Davidson County to showcase and honor their new initiatives and innovations. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee report, please. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Education Committee voted six in favor, none against, with one abstention. Councilman Schumann. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would move for approval with a brief explanation. Sure. Uh, so this is an idea, uh, just a simple idea for the city. It comes from our sister city in Belfast. They do a major program for young people in that city um, where they get folks together uh, and allow them opportunities to uh, come up with all kinds of initiatives and ideas. Uh, it kind of fits in place with what the mayor is doing with Opportunity Now. Um, so this program is modeled after that. Uh, it actually encourages us to work together with the, the school system, uh, the school board, the mayor's office. Uh, and um, I'd like to also say also work with Oasis Venture, which is Oasis Center's, Center's new program, which actually encourages sort of the same thing. They're interested. They're on board. This would be something good for a lot of our young people to showcase their talents. And with that, I would move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without objection, we'll take all those matters, all those bills together. Seeing no objection, is there a motion to approve bills on first reading? Moved and properly seconded. In favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016 4 73 is a bill is our first bill on second reading amends 4.37 acres of the hillwood court at nashville west specific plan district for property located at 6813b and 6817 charlotte pike to add parcel 15 permit and permit a maximum of 50 residential units for 34 residential units were previously approved council lady mina johnson 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to defer to meeting and refer back to Planning Zoning uh, Historical Committee. Let's get our committee report as well. Committee Councilor report, Allen. please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning Zoning Historical recommended uh, deferral of two meetings and re-referral back to the committee, 12 in favor, zero against. And I renew my motion yes, to I'm defer two meetings. Motion to defer two meetings and re-refer to Planning and Zoning. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-483, Councilman Mendez, Gilmore, and others, amends the Metro Code to require the Metro Police Department to provide staff traffic stop reports to the Metro Council. Councilman Mendez. Committee report, please. Councilman Pardew. A public safety review this to vote was three to three, so we have no recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mendez. I'd like to move approval with an explanation. Floor is yours. So um, this ordinance is on second reading would make it so uh, we amended an existing ordinance that requires annual crime reports and we would add to that an annual report about traffic stop data. Um, again, we've talked uh, a little bit ago about the resolution that went along with this about how the goal here is to shine a light on to have a, a statement from the metropolitan government that there are important issues we need to talk about about the intersection of um, uh, how we have a great police force um, and we've also got a uh, apparently disparate impact in how traffic stops work in Nashville, um, how they're experienced by people of different races. Um, we move forward by shining a light on that and this ordinance would say that we value having that those statistics put out um, every year. Before I uh, see the microphone, I wanna um, just add that uh, uh, I, I really appreciate um, the, the emotion and truth um, that we're hearing from so many of our colleagues tonight. Um, that goes um, uh, to, to both sides of these issues. Um, uh, Councilman Pridemore, former Detective Pridemore, talking about um, what he's seen on the job. Uh, Councilman Pulley talking about the same thing. Um, it, it, that's a perspective that is valuable and important to Nashville. And what uh, Council Lady um, Gilmore and, and Councilman Scott Davis talked about is also a truth um, that exists in Nashville. And the goal of this legislation is so that we have, as a community, more opportunity for us to hear each other's stories and figure out a way forward. Um, both, both perspectives are true. It doesn't have to be either or. It should be both and. Um, I, I would respectfully request that everybody uh, vote yes for this and, and move this legislation forward. Thank you. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS, I'm sorry, BL 2016-519, Council Lady Hueso. Uh, changes 9.69 acres from R15 to SP zoning for property located at 1360 Pleasant Hill Road to permit boat and self-service storage. Council Lady Hueso. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. I move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, RSBL 2017-559, Councilman Hastings, Rosenberg, and Elrod a metro, amends the Metro Zoning Code to allow members of the Metro Council to initiate applications to amend the official zoning map for property owned by Metro Government. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move Let's to the committee report. Oh, committee report. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended disapproval um, I'm not sure how to say this. Uh, one was in favor of approval, nine were against that. Thank you, Council Levy. Councilman Hastings. I would like to move to defer this bill, uh, three meetings, and also make a uh, brief explanation, please. Okay. All right. Motion to defer three meetings and brief explanation. The floor is yours. All right, uh, uh, council members as well as the uh, vice mayor here. This bill that has come up, everybody, especially if we read and we understand the law uh, that we are legislating, we should understand that this is state law. 
This state law has been around for a mighty, mighty long time. Uh, for those of us who have were not bo born back in the 1950s uh, or whatever else, we, we may not know about this. But due to research, uh, and this legislation was not something that was written up by myself, we actually took the state legislative uh, approach and took it there because it is pro uh, pro leasee or pro renter. It protects the renter from being being able to be put out, be set aside, but it also has information in there to where the the renter or the lease uh, e it has to follow by the uh, by rules. Right now, there is not a common set of language that's set aside by our anything that Metro Metro um, uh, funds are given for building of, of housing for us. We need a common language. I am currently working with other agencies and other other departments to find a common ground to make sure that we're we're working in the appropriate areas. I I. I ask all of you to actually look at this and to just go and support this because we do need a common language uh, before we go on uh, and actually destroy this, this thing that is really good for us, uh, which is a part, some out of the Barnes Fund and also anything that Metro tax our own dollars are going to. You're oh, I'm sorry. There's a motion to defer three meetings? Yes. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-581, Councilman Shulman. Amends the Metro Code to grant full investigative authority to the Metro Auditor in order to allow for independent audits and reviews of all Metro government departments, boards, and commissions, as well as performance of contracts by entities that contract with Metro government. Councilman Shulman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, budget committee report is in. The Rules Committee uh, deferred one meeting, and I would move to defer one meeting on this measure. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-585, Council Lady Wiener, Rosenberg, and others. Amends the Metro Code regarding miscellaneous animal control regulations. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Uh, Councilman Pulley. Uh, if, well, move that to the heel. BL 2017-586, Council Lady Wiener and, and, well, same problem. Madam Clerk, which bill are we on right now? Are you still on 585? Hey. Somebody asked Councilman Pulley to come back into the chambers. BL 2017-585. Councilman Rosenberg, we're back on you. We're going to start. We're going to stay on line. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. On BL 2017-585, the committee report from Health Hospitals, Councilman Pulley. Health Hospitals and uh, Social Services Committee met and voted four in favor, zero against, for deferral by committee for one meeting. Councilman Rosenberg. Move to defer one meeting, please. The motion to defer one meeting is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-586, Wiener and Withers. Amends the Metro Code regarding the a application of animal control regulations beyond the Urban Services District. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Pulley. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee met and uh, voted four in favor, zero against, for deferral, one meeting, moved by the committee. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move uh, deferral one meeting. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016-612.
sorry, BL 2017 612, Cooper Mendez and Council Lady Mina Johnson amends the Metro Code pertaining to the submission and formatting of agendas and minutes by boards and commissions of Metro Government. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, move, um, request committee reports. Council Lady Murphy. Councilman Withers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee voted uh, to approve 740 against. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules approved 840 against. Councilman Cooper. Move for approval. Great. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-613, Council Lady Allen, Councilman Elrod, abandons and accepts water and sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and any associated easements for properties located at 519 and 521 Chesterfield Avenue. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against, and a move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-614, Councilman Hastings, Al Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing water main, a fire hydrant, an easement, and accepts new fire hydrants for six properties located along 9th Avenue North. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I want to be on the right bill uh, at this time, but committee report, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman uh, Hastings. I would like to move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Stick with me, guys. BL 2017-615, O'Connell, Al Allen, and Elrod abandons an existing sanitary sewer main and manhole unit and accepts a new sanitary sewer main and manholes for property, property located at 1209 Hawkins Avenue. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I am here for you. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and historical rent approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-616. Kendall, Elrod, and Allen. Changes the name of a portion of 16th Avenue North to Barbecue Alley. Uh, Councilman, I'm going to go to Councilman Elrod. Are you, you handling this one? Councilman Elrod should be able to handle it, and he was also on one of the committees that's going to be given reports, so I'm happy for him to carry. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Councilman Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval as substituted with the correct spelling of barbecue. Ten in favor, zero against. Councilman Potts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic and parking voted to approve six four zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Elrod. Uh, public Works recommend for approval as substituted, as substituted, 10 in favor, zero against, and we look forward to having a uh, discussion of the Public Works Committee of the different flavors of the different regions of barbecue at a uh, later uh, Public Works Committee meeting uh, location to be determined. Thank you. Uh, I think first we need to move to substitute. <laughs> That's what that meant. It was I moved for approval. You moved to substitute, sir. I moved to substitute. You give me a bill about food, and this is what's going to happen. <laughs> I move the substitute. Second. It's motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. There's now a motion to approve the bill as substituted on second reading. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bill on third reading. We're on page 19. We got two more pages, guys. Stick with me. BL 2016-308, Councilman Hastings amends the Metro Code to require residential rental properties receiving allocations from the Barnes Fund to include language concerning tenant conduct in the rental agreement. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Uh, we've got all the reports uh, in. We got all of them? All right. Uh, I've already said everything I need to say about this, so I don't need to go on. 
but I am I am moving to defer this being it on the third reading and we have done it and defer before I understand that uh, we will have to defer indefinitely uh, to bring it back up and we will do that uh, with the clerk's department all right motion to defer indefinitely it's pro properly seconded all in favor opposed motion carries was that did I hear a no I didn't think so BL 2016 433, Councilman Cooper, Allen, and Elrod approves an assignment or transfer of the franchise rights held by Nashville Data Link LLC to Windstream KDL LLC. Council Cooper. Um, Mr. Vice Mayor, all committee reports in. Move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016 532, O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod. Changes the name of a portion of Joe Johnston Avenue to Lifeway Plaza. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-537, Councilman Hastings. Changes point one two acres from CL to MUNA zoning for properties located at 2214 Gaines Street. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like to move for approval with all committee reports in. It's motion to approve. It's properly sec. I'm sorry, Madam Clerk and Council Lady Allen. We need your committee report from Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Planning, Zoning, Historical Recommended Approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Councilman H Hastings. Renew your motion. I'm, I'm sorry. There you go. I'd like to re renew my motion for being moved for approval. Thank you, Councilman. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016, 2017, 547, Councilman Hastings. Changes 0.49 acres from RS to SP zoning for property located at 1822 River Drive to permit two residential units. Councilman Hastings. I keep turning. I did not turn you off there. Somehow I got turned off. There you go. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee report, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zone historical recommended approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Councilman Hastings. With all committee reports in, we move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 552. Councilman Hastings. Uh, changes 0.18 acres from IWD to MUNA zoning for property located at 1319 Baptist World Center Drive. Councilman Hastings. Mr. President, committee report, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning zoning historical recommended approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady Councilman. With all committee reports then, we move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-556, Councilman Hastings changes 0.25 acres from RS to MULA zoning for properties located at 1221 and 1223 Brick Church Pike. Councilman Hastings. Okay, Mr. President, one more time. Uh, committee report. Council Lady Allen. One more time. Planning zoning historical recommended <laughs> approval. Ten in favor, zero against. One Torture. more time. Move for approval. This motion approved. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Thank Opposed? You. Motion carries. BL 2017-582, Councilman Leonardo, amends the Metro Code regarding the sale of public property. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committee reports being in, I move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-583, Council Lady Allen, amends the Metro Card Code regarding dedication of a portion of transient occupancy privilege taxes generated by the short-term rental properties to the Barnes Fund for affordable housing. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Again, this is just a housekeeping measure to move things into the appropriate section, and with that, I would move for approval. This motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-584, Pardue and Rosenberg, amends the Metro Code pertaining to, to the alcoholic content of beer. Councilman uh, Pardue. 584. I just move for approval. There we go. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 
I apologize that uh, Councilman Hankston has kept us so late tonight. <laughs> you, if I if I noticed, you were being distracted by your colleague to your right. Bill 2017-589, Councilman Syracuse, uh, Van Rees and others, authorizes the Industrial Development Board to accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to the Opryland Hotel and Convention Center and to extend the period for allocating certain hotel taxes to the funding of cost flood related uh, repairs and renovations to the Grand Ole Opry House and to accept the donation of two parcels of property for use in the Metro government's public park system. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move approval with a brief statement. Floor is yours. Thank you. The, the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center has been a major part of Nashville's economic growth for decades. And even when the initial hotel was built in 1977, the Grand Ole Opry had been on the radio for 51 years and was already a Nashville institution. This latest $90 million investment is the fourth major expansion of the resort. Metro has always been a partner in supporting Ryman as a key employer and tax generator with a brand that is uniquely locally Nashville, but known worldwide. Very few can claim that title. I want to th again thank Councilman Cooper for leading the effort to ensure tax incentive deals are for the maximum benefit to the taxpayer. This is an important oversight duty of this body. I do believe this deal is measured, it's limited, and it falls within the tradition of Nashville supporting Ryman and the resort who have been a critical part of our fast growing tourism related tax revenues. As I mentioned in my letter, this body made a good move last year with Councilman Mendez's leadership, improving the way tax incentives are structured and redirected to the general fund. I would support additional ideas that identify benchmarks, thresholds that would help us objectively weigh these tax incentive practices and improve the transparency to taxpayers. I think for a lot of people, these are difficult to understand and therefore they naturally don't trust them. Part of that mistrust comes from the use of these for larger corporations. At both the state and metro level, what's important to understand is that the primary focus of these tools is the job creation and the subsequent tax revenue growth. I do think it's time for us to be serious about enacting policies that encourage and support a definition of small business that includes mom and pop, local, unique businesses that our communities all across Davidson County want more of, that we hear all about, that we, uh, all our communities want, to that further local pride and character. As we experience this rapid growth, our neighborhoods are more and more desiring this kind of true authenticity that these kinds of local businesses bring. Councilman Schulman last meeting asked about when will it end? Well, if the argument is more fundamental and there is a philosophical argument about the use of tax incentives, then we need to discuss that with the state legislature as they are the ones who have authorized the municipalities across Tennessee to use them. I know that there are some that are disappointed that the water park is not going to be open to the public, but folks, that's been the business model since 1977. They want you to stay there. It's a resort. That's how it works, and it has worked. It worked for them, they've been very successful, and because of that, Nashville's been very successful. As I said, I did not sponsor this bill lightly. I do believe this next major investment at Opryland will be a grand addition to the Nashville tourist experience, coming from all around the world, and with them, the sustained greater tax revenues for many years to come, and I ask for your support. Thank you. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, and most of my questions were uh, answered on second um, reading, but I did have um, two more questions um, that I wanted to address to Mr. Wilshire. Um, so um, at the last meeting, um, I had requested information on um, whether these incentives work. Um, and you had promised that you would get them to me. But as far as I can tell, we never, I've never received anything from you on this. I can provide updated job counts for uh, a number of the, I don't have all of them, just I haven't gotten the information back from the companies yet, but I can provide updated job counts for a number of them, including UBS and HCA, which has significantly exceeded the expectations of the incentives that were put in place for those. But I just don't have all of them back yet, so I haven't published the analysis. Uh, I, I, what I, th I thought we had been promised was um, information generally about whether tax incentives, tax abatements, economic incentives actually work not just in, not uh, not in those specific instances, but across the board, because I think uh, what I think Councilman Syracuse stated so eloquently is um, we have to know 
I mean, if we continue to do these things, we have to have some understanding of whether these things actually work. Um, and that's what I understood that you had promised. I'm, I, and I would still like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask for a deferral or anything tonight. I just simply think that um, council members need to understand um, if these things work generally. Uh, what is the evidence? Is there evidence that these things do work? Is there evidence that they don't work? And how do you even determine whether, in the end, whether any of this stuff made any economic difference at all? I mean, what we're looking at right now is information about something that's going to happen in the future. We have no idea whether it's going to work or not. So what I'm looking for from your office is information that we can supply to the rest of the council to give us some idea of whether these things actually do what they're supposed to do. Sure, so. and, in, and in an effort to answer your question, and, I, and I, I, I want to make sure I specifically understand your question. In an effort to answer your question, the, I understood your question to be the deals that Metro has done, have the job counts and revenue expectations exceeded the expectations when they were adopted by council? If you're asking for deals done beyond Metro or broad, more broad deals, academic research on those, I can look into those. I can only speak to the ones that Metro has supported and this, that this body has passed historically. Well, and I guess what I would say is that I wouldn't mind having both. <clears throat> sure. Excuse me. Because um, if the deals work here, that's great. Um, but not all deals work. So what, what, what I'd like to know is across the board, and I've done some research on my own, and states are starting to look at these things to figure out whether these things actually do work whether the jobs are created, whether you get the economic incentives, get the economic boost, that's what I'm looking for, and that's what I'd like to see from your office. Absolutely. I'm happy to provide that. And I'll do my best to research how other states structure their incentives, as, as we've discussed previously. Each deal is structured in its own way, and we think that at the direction of this body, we've put in place some very strict accountability provisions that have strengthened the incentives down here, and I'll look into those provisions in other communities and see how they do them as well. Okay. If you can get that to all the members of the council, I think, I think we'd appreciate that. You bet. Um, the second question, last question is, um, again, this is from a national perspective, but this is what we hear. Um, and this goes back to one of the questions I asked last, um, last meeting about we'd love to see this continue forever. I, I think my question was, when is this going to stop? So my question to you is, when, when your office makes an analysis of whether these things are good or not, are we considering the fact that based upon the economic history of this country, that at some point, unfortunately, we are going to be headed back to a recession? That's what happens in this country. It's nice to think that we'll never have another one, but we go up and we go down. That's just the way this thing works. And so I guess my question to you is, when we look at these tax abatements um, across the board, are we considering the fact that at some point, most likely, the economy is going to turn down because it does? Would you like me to answer that question? or? I think that's up to the vice mayor. Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, um, Vice Mayor. And, and I guess I've been troubled by this as well. At first I was for it, but I've not received one email from any constituent that supports this particular bill and project. And I've been troubled because <clears throat> it seems like we've been passing a lot of things, but none of them seem to be specifically with the people in priority. And I don't want to continue to pass bills and resolutions that's going to benefit everybody except for the people. So like Councilman Schumann, I would be interested in the job creations and who the jobs are going to and what kinds of jobs are going. And I would really like to see this body do more for the constituency that voted for us to be in the positions that we are in. And without that, I just in good conscience cannot approve this. I'd rather spend millions of dollars. We just talked about and dialogued on having enough money for body cameras to make it more uh, protective for and safe for people. And I would rather see the money spent towards things like that that's going to be for the greater good. Councilman Cooper. 
thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'll be fairly quick. I wanted to thank Councilman Syracuse for his thoughtful sponsorship of this relatively difficult bill. But to say, I m express my own reluctance to let groups out of paying their fair share of property taxes, and that we will fail as a community if you let that happen. And, and furthermore, for, to remind all of us here that every time that we need in the future something for our districts, a reading instructor for children, a policeman, a body camera, or a stormwater drain, we will know where to find it, and you'll find it in the Opryland swimming pool. And literally, that is where it will be. Council. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to stand with brief support for this. Uh, just a couple comments that, uh, number one, feel like this is a very modest proposal. Uh, we did a lot of these last term. I thought we did a lot more last term. Uh, I appreciate the Barry administration's approach on this thus far. Um, that we've done, number one, less, uh, and number two, just the, really the modest proposal with this particular deal, uh, with the pause after they're reappraised after 2017. Um, so I think it's a good deal. Uh, we are gonna keep doing these. I, you know, after last term, I thought maybe we should do them a little bit less, which we have been. I think we're doing them a little more modest, which we are. So I appreciate Matt's office and Mayor Barry and where they're approaching this, um, and I stand in support and I hope you do as well. Thank you. Councilman Withers. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I want to rise in support of this bill. Um, certainly, there is uh, an offer to uh, add some uh, greenway space along the river, and I know uh, there has been a longstanding application to create a connector between the pedestrian bridge that goes between Shelby Bottoms Park and Two Rivers Park, and this presents a pretty unique opportunity to potentially expand that all the way up to the end of McGavick Pike, and many, many of my constituents had written in favor of any efforts to expand that greenway over there, uh, again, with District 6 having a large number of runners and bicycle enthusiasts and things like that, as well as I uh, have constituents who uh, work at Opryland currently and would love to be able to uh, ride a bike to work at Opryland. Um, also, I think Council Member Hurt raises a really, really good point that we all need to keep our eye on, which is about creating job opportunities for folks in our community who really need jobs. And one of the things that uh, I've been following, I know many of you have as well, is the uh, Mayor's Youth Violence Summit. And one of the main recommendations uh, out of that was to try to create more jobs, in particular for young people. And uh, I think this uh, information that I received recently is that, because I asked about that, is to what extent uh, Ryman is willing to participate in the opportunity now. I think certainly even with seasonal jobs, uh, if that were the case, this type of a job, while it's not the old Opryland theme park that I grew up visiting as a child, um, it still is a, a type of a job that, that might be a, a really good fit for young people who, who would need an opportunity. And uh, it's also my understanding that Ryman has contributed financially uh, to that program as a sponsor uh, at this stage, even before it's open. And so I think in terms of expanding our greenway access and potentially supporting the effort to create jobs for young people who, who need jobs are, are reasons that I would want to support this proposal, and I hope you do as well. Thank you. Councilman Scott Davis. I rise in support of, of course, our playing Gaylord. More importantly, I rise in support of my colleague, Councilman Jeff Syracuse. Um, before he was on the council, I had the pleasure of sitting on a board with this young man. Um, we all remember him as the president and a lead force in Hip Donaldson. Opryland is, a, is, a, is one of our largest employers. It's definitely the largest employer in his district. One thing Opryland does, it employs a lot of people in my district also. Now, they've not been asking me to lobby for this, those who work for Gaylord, but I've seen what Gaylord has done for their employees. Like, I have a couple who works in different departments for Gaylord, and Gaylord officials are trying to help them with, their, with some housing down payment assistance and other programs, Gaylord does a lot for their employees, a lot that we don't know about. And more importantly, with them participating and committing 
to help employ the youth with the mayor's initiatives and other initiatives. And a lot of us, some of us may remember a lot of young kids working at the Opperland theme park, you know, when it was open. But more importantly right now, we need to ask for these economic opportunities for our communities, for large employers in North, South, and East Nashville. But more importantly, there's an opportunity here because we have a college that both black and white people in this room went to Tennessee State University. Tennessee State University is gonna be building a hotel and other facilities. We need to craft a deal just like this for Tennessee State University. And we need to craft one for other, other schools and other large employers. And I know, and I've seen Mr. Wilshire at work. I brought him to my district years ago. He got on a high scaffolding. And I'm like, hey, I wanna put a large three-tier golf course right there. And it's coming out of the ground. Hey, I wanna improve this riverfront, you know? And we were both a little younger, it had less gray hair then, but it's happening. And I remember, uh, I remember looking across the bridge and other council people adding things to their districts and asking. And this administration and the past administration helping once again, North Nashville, I don't want to go in detail, but there's a lot of businesses out there. I know Mount Zion has a lot of stuff going on. In South Nashville, you have the Baptist World Center, um, the American Bible Baptist College out there, and you have a lot of other things going on in District 1 and several other districts who can use an economic boost like this. Submit it, use it. Nick, DaCosta, Brenda, the South Nashville Coalition, take this, bring it to Bishop. Bring it to your community. We can use that. The Native American Cultural Center, bring it. Let's get it together, let's ask for it. Because just like winter is coming, we're coming. And we're gonna want the same things. So I say let's support it, like we did the bridge, like we did, like we're gonna do, do for this, like we did so many other things. But we need to ask for it and do the same things in our community. Let's ask for the money. I don't, I, keep, I don't want to keep sounding like a broken record, but come on, before I ask for it, they say no more. So, so South Nashville, North, come on. Please approve this bill. Councilman Foley. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief. Uh, I appreciate the comments of my colleagues. Uh, I agree with Council Lady Hurt on her position on the jobs. I also think Councilman Schulman brings up some very good points. Uh, these... I generally rely upon the information that's provided uh, through the economic studies that are done prior to these, but it is very important and I think we move forward and, and take a look back at these deals and see if these numbers really and truly do come true. Right now, it's my understanding, we got uh, Ryman's uh, invested $90 million in this, and this is gonna create 700 full-time jobs, in addition to 1,200 jobs during construction. Those are really good numbers. Uh, we're going to basically uh, give them uh, a tax abatement that lasts through 2025 where they'll receive the full assessment and the, and the abatement's limited to the water park alone. Uh, the impact of the park is estimated at $8 million in state and local taxes uh, with, in, just in the construction component of this and an additional $4.7 million in taxes each year the park operates. So these are really good numbers and I think very worthy of the investment. Uh, but I do agree with Councilman Schulman that it's really good for us to follow up on the, these things and see uh, if uh, a lot of the tax incentive numbers that we're getting uh, are working. So uh, with that, I do rise in support of this bill and I'll be voting for it. Council Lady Van Rees. I appreciate that. Um, Matt, could you repeat those numbers on those jobs again? The jobs anticipated on this deal? Yes, the economic impact study prepared by the University of Tennessee, and I want to be clear, these are not jobs limited exclusively to the Ryman Resort. So when there's accountability measures tracking this later on, uh, these aren't just jobs, but 700 net new, 699 net new jobs uh, to the national market. Thank you very much. That's one bad day. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I like those $100 million we got at the last tax uh, 
time. And I think that's really a good argument to say yes to this. Uh, we didn't get those $100 million just because that was a concerted effort to invest in our brand and to make it happen. So if you have doubts about anything else, just think about all the stuff we were able to do with those $100 million. And hopefully next time it'll be more. So I obviously I'm going to vote yes for this, but I wanted to use this opportunity to say two things. One is uh, I want to thank Council Member Cooper for letting me invite uh, Mr. Wilshire to come to the council and listen from you all on what do you guys think should be on the next uh, investment uh, that we do. And I encourage you all to, when we schedule that meeting, for you to come and share with Mr. Wilshire what is, I hope I'm saying your name right. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> to share with him what are the things that you would like to see, what issues are important to you uh, that should be included in those deals. Uh, I also wanted to use this opportunity to suggest that we start a small business caucus. We had a great meeting today with Mr. Wilshire to talk about small business and how to support mom and pop stores in Davidson County. Uh, we hear a lot from people like, why do we invest on big business? Why don't we do the same with small business? And he tells me many of you have reached out to him with that concern, and I want to invite you to start the conversation on what can we do as a council to support small businesses in Davidson County and support the, the great work they are already doing. You should really uh, visit with him and learn of, of the stuff they are doing. So I ask you for your support. Think about those $100 million. And uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Councilor Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I rise in support of this bill. I wanted to speak to the, the parks aspect of it as, uh, as chair of the Parks Committee. Um, as part of this uh, in incentive package, uh, Ryman is donating two key parcels um, for river access. And additionally, we worked with them um, to get a more firm commitment to engage around making the Greenway connection to which Councilman Withers spoke. Um, I concur with Councilman Davis that this is a modest abatement. Um, it has a finite time period of about uh, eight years and is specific only to uh, the water park parcel. And in that regard, I think it is worth our support. Thank you. Councilman Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I remember when, of course, that area down there was the old Rudy's farm. There wasn't nothing there. Then Gaylord came in with the Opryland theme park. Um, one thing, I've had a couple of emails that were against this. I've had a couple of emails for it. And what I've tried to explain is the economic impact that it makes to the area. Um, I'd like to ask Matt Wiltshire about a question. The study that the University of Tennessee did, how accurate are those studies, or do you know? Yeah, the, the economic analysis uh, by Dr. Fox, I haven't heard any uh, critique of those or uh, an assessment of the accuracy. I mean, what he is uh, analyzing is the construction costs and then the tax revenues generated by that. So I would say uh, my experience has been that they are accurate. Um, obviously, there can be fluctuations from time, but my understanding is um, this rigorous analytical methodology. Okay. And it, how much experience does he have doing those type of economic uh, studies? It, but, but, He's the economist for the state. I mean, he is the state's economist. And, and that's what we have to rely on, and I'm trying to explain that to my constituents that some were against it. I want to explain them that normally when I wrote them an email back, I look at these type of incentives as to what type of revenue they do generate. And if they degenerate the revenue over and above the incentive we're giving them, then we have to look at that. So. Uh, I'm probably going to support this tonight, and I ask my colleagues to support as well. Thank you. Councilor Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I've, I've given this one a lot of thought and made one of my charts that y'all probably are familiar with to for and, and against, and because and, I've seen the emails on both sides. And um, I think it's important to be clear that we are not paying them and that if we can rely on the economic study that it is a net gain, there will be more money in the general fund if all things go according to the predictions. Um, and I hope to goodness they do. So I think that's an important thing for us to continue to, to follow up on that. I will say, I wish we were incentivizing a theme park that was open to everyone. And I, I'm just gonna say that, Matt, right now in front of everybody else. Um, you know, I, I think that to say we um, wanna build something that will increase tourism in Nashville, that's sure something that worked pretty well a while back. 
That's a huge investment. We're not doing that tonight, but I just wanted to go on record saying that. Um, that being said, I have I have fought over this a lot. Um, I think the 700 jobs is is not insignificant. I think it's also important for us to reiterate that we do have a small business incentive grant. Uh, and I think that's still out there. The council passed that, and in response to thank you, Matt, in response to people asking why we only gave these to large large companies. So we need to continue to get the word out that there there are incentives available to him, to small businesses that increase employees and that, that's important. So that being said, I, I've wrestled with this a lot. I think that um, it's important for people to understand that we are not paying Gaylord. We, uh, Ryman, we will ultimately end up having more money in the general fund as a result of this if, if, uh, if it is successful, which we hope it will be. Thank you. Council Ms. Webb. I respectfully call a question. This motion uh, for the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will open the machine. I'm ready. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine. I have 34, six against, no abstentions. Motion carries. Bill 2017-591, Councilman Sledge, L. Rod, and Allen abandons and accepts sewer and water mains, sanitary manholes, and easements for property located at 1500 12th Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Motion approved. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-592. Kendall L. Rod and Allen authorizes HRT of Tennessee Incorporated to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 2011 Hayes Street. Councilman L. Rod. Move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-593. Councilman Scott Davis, L. Rod and Allen abandons an unnumbered alley right-of-way. Councilman Scott Davis, stick with me, guys. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. Can we, um, committee reports, please. We got him in. Got him. Go. Move approval. Move approval, please. Yep. Move approval. approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You got to bear with me here for a second, guys, because we have, I have to read something in regards to three bills on public hearing. Um, the public hearings on three recently filed ordinances regarding short-term rental properties were deferred at the last meeting from March 7th, 2017 to April 4th, 2017. Now the sponsors of each of these ordinances have agreed to defer public hearing from April 4th to May 2nd, 2017 to allow for planning commission consideration of each bill on March 23rd, 2017. <laughs> The bill number and captions of these ordinances are as follows. Bill number 2017-608, an ordinance amending sections 17.04.060, 17.08030, 17.16250, and 17.16070 of the Metro Code of Laws to establish distinct land uses for short-term rental property slash owner-occupied and short-term rental property slash non-owner occupied and establishing a phase out date in year 2021 for short-term rental property non-owner occupied this is proposal number 2017z 004tx001 upon motion duly seconded the bill passed first reading and was referred to the planning commission and planning and zoning and historical committee by voice vote of the council bill 2017-609 an ordinance amending 17.16.250E of the Metro Code of the Laws to establish a 12-month moratorium on the issuance of new Type 2 and Type 3 short-term rental properties and permit numbers for properties zoned for single and two-family residential use. Proposal number 2017Z005TX001. 
Upon motion duly seconded, the bill passed first reading and was referred to the Planning Commission and Planning and Zoning Historical Committee by voice vote of the Council, BL 2017-610. An ordinance amending section 1716-250E of the Metro Code of Laws to establish a 36-month moratorium on the issuance of new Type 2 and Type 3 short-term rental properties for pro uh, permits for properties located zoned for single and two-family residential use. Proposal number 2017-Z006-DX001. Upon motion duly seconded, the bill passed first reading and was referred to the Planning Commission and Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee by a voice vote of the Council. All in favor of deferral of the public hearings upon these two ordinances say aye. Aye. Council Lady Roberts, would you like to be recorded as abstaining? Thank you, Council Lady Roberts. With that, um, I um, would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville dot